Thanks for coming by, guys. We'll get started in just a couple minutes. Right at noon, we will start the modeling or something related to modeling. We'll start something. <laughs> something will start around noon. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Happy Friday, we made it. We're at the end of the week. So you may have noticed that uh, already things are looking a little different than normal. We didn't have the, uh, the camera shooting down the table. Um, you can see behind me instead of the, you know, invisibleness. Uh, there's no, you can't see my keyboard and my weird squatty hands that that creates. Um, unfortunately, uh, we don't have Matt. Matt left us, so I'm doing this on my own. Good news is he only left us for a week, so he'll be back in here next week. So I'm sorry, that really probably didn't come out right. He didn't leave, leave, but you know, just stepped out for a long weekend. So next week we'll be back at it. But unfortunately, there's a couple things that we won't be having. Um, we won't be having Matt's witty remarks. That'll be, oh, we'll miss that. Um, we do have on the other side of my monitor, Kara is filling in for Matt. So say hi, Kara. Hey, guys. So when I get into the modeling groove, head down and ignore your comments. Don't take it personally. <laughs> That's why Kara's here. She's going to remind me that people are still here with me. So um, just letting you know that. That's, that's what's happening. But it does mean we already had a request from Paul. Um, or no, I'm sorry. Cecil asked uh, about the Krusty the Crab theme music. Krusty Krab theme music, and unfortunately, no, we won't have music clips. There'll be no 
cute animations popping up on screen. That's all Matt, and that, that will be missing this week. So I'm sorry. But he'll be back. That's right. He will be back. Gone but not forgotten and <laughs> back again soon. So anyhow, with that, how's everybody doing? Does everybody, everybody have a good week? Everybody excited to get, uh, get Pirate D <laughs> today? Arr. Arr. Um, all right. So a couple housekeeping keeping things before we start on that. Thing number one, I want to share something with you guys. So I guess it was only a week ago. It seems like longer ago than that, but we uh, did a model of the Iron Man helmet, did a bunch of lofting and everything. Um, I did take that. I took just the mask and sent it over to the printer, and this is what we got. So that turned out pretty cool. Ooh, nice. How long did that take you? Uh, this took the printer um, 33 hours or something like that. Oh. So I, uh, you guys ask questions about 3D printing, so I'm not going to talk about this real long, but I did want to just kind of fill you in. I took it, uh, I made it an eight, eighth inch thick inside of SketchUp. I printed it with three shells and 30% infill, and I printed it on the, on the bed flat like this. So that means all of this, all the inside was support material. It was all fill material. And that was cool. That was fine. It printed. It did its thing. It took a lot of filament and a lot of time, but it did seem to print pretty good. Um, getting all the support material off there was rough. It was literally blood, sweat, and tears because I was sweating <laughs> as I pulled it off, and then I cut myself, and then I cried. So we did blood, sweat, <laughs> and tears all happen, but this came out pretty cool. I already started uh, a little bit of uh, put some filler paint on there and started doing a little sanding. You can actually see... You look right there you can see the quads that got created uh in those little flat squares so i'll have to work to get that all smooth and then uh before we try to make it shiny so that's going to be pretty cool so i want to show you that was my homework <laughs> from last week that's done now for your homework i'm a little disappointed guys <laughs> all right so for those of you who don't know you do have homework and I'm going to be calling you guys out on a little bit more now. We have our best bus ever competition is still going on. So right now in the 3D warehouse, we have this right here, the SketchUp school bus. And I created on uh, one of our live streams and uploaded. And what we're asking is for you guys to customize the bus to make it the best bus ever. So channel your inner fourth grader. Think about the last time you were on a school bus. What would have made it cool? What, did it need like a big uh, Firebird logo on the front, flames down the side, uh, monster truck wheels? Whatever you think would make a bus awesome. Get into SketchUp, do that to this bus, and upload it with the hashtag bu best bus ever. If you do that, you'll be entered into a competition where you could win some pretty cool SketchUp stuff and some respect. I'm sure you guys are SketchUp experts or you always enough respect, but... A little more respect never hurts, right? Can't hurt to be have too much respect. So hopefully you guys can get in there. And I think we have till the 27th, so at the end of the month. So we do have a little bit of time left, but uh, it's not time to, to get lazy. It's, it's time to kick it into the next gear, whatever gear you're on, plus one. Um, and uh, just make an awesome bus. So yeah, that's, uh, that's your homework. So I'm going to be checking in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this screen up every week. I'm going to show off <laughs> the new ones. I, I want to show off new ones. That's what I really want. But we have the same two here from last week. So, you know, help, help me help me help you. Help me help you all. So if we have more models to show, this part of the show is going to be a little more fun. Anyhow, that's enough. Now let's get to uh, work on something. That's the end of that sentence, on something. <laughs> All right, so here we are in SketchUp. We got Pirate Mark. Arr. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn his words off. Oh, now he's got nothing. The bubbles on uh, bubbles on the same layer. Oh well. Looks like he's missing a lens. That's his. That's his eye patch. <laughs> I got a little lazy. I did. I put the handkerchief on an earring, and then I figured I could draw an eye patch, or I'll just uh, I'll just fill one in black. So that's that's him pirating. Okay, um, so. We're here today to draw a pirate ship. We had a couple questions um, about 
different kinds of ships. Somebody asked for a yacht. Somebody said boat. Um, so I just kind of thought, well, what would what would a fun ship type model be? Um, I've seen actually a lot of people. I've seen they put uh, models up of uh, pieces they created to build their own canoes or rowboats. Um, the CNC cutting the ribs and stuff. Really cool. So this this is not uncharted territory. It's not a place I've spent a lot of time, but uh, it'll it'll be a fun thing to do today. So when asked about creating a boat, I thought that a pirate ship would be the most fun. That'd be the most fun thing to do. So I don't know exactly how this is all going to go. And I should also point out, I know almost nothing about boats. I know starboard and port are things, but I don't remember which one's which. Um, I think aft means the back. Bow is the front. Got that one. <laughs> you know a little bit about both. <laughs> I think I just exhausted it all. <laughs> um, so if you guys have information you want to throw in at me, feel free. If uh, this does not end up being a accurate boat, well, we'll, we'll have to roll with that. But uh, yeah, hopefully we get some good tips here. That's the important part, right? Is that we get to spend Friday hanging out doing some SketchUp, and hopefully we all walk away learning a little bit more than we knew when we first showed up. So, having said those things, say hi to a couple of people. Um, Steven Osias was on super early. I think he jumped on like almost 20 minutes ago. So, hey, Stevens. Um, let's see. Hello, Mason. Hi, Vasco. Hello, Red Sea. Uh, Yar Raw Design. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I hate a robot. So, got people chiming in and watching on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So, um, I'll also throw out if anything starts not looking good, not sounding good, anything like that, let me know. Um, Matt showed me kind of how to do this streaming thing. So, I have OBS installed and it's running down here. But there's a couple knobs I can poke at and twist and stuff like that. But <laughs> if something's not looking good, we'll do our best to fix it. But we'll, we'll see what, what we're capable of. All right. So I haven't said all that. Let's start modeling. Question real quick about what Mac I have. I currently have this Mac. So I have a MacBook Pro 2017. These are the specs that I work with, that I show. So... That's what I got. Um, nothing special. We don't do any super high end or anything like that. We work with uh, the standard equipment. So, all right, I'm going to hop in here and start modeling. Um, I think what I'm going to do first, so there's a couple different ways I thought about this. I'm going to come up with a general shape. Ah, oh, there we go. See, that's, that's more or less from there. The ship kind of builds itself. I'll make it a little narrower and kind of what I'm thinking is from about here back, do a 2D drawing of what I'm thinking the ship's going to look like. Uh, I'll go to the midpoint here, give myself a nice little arc. That looks good. I'll take this then and I'm going to, oops. Didn't hit option hard enough. Flip that right over like that. Looks okay. I don't love that shape. Um, I kind of feel like I want it to be, you know, come out a little bit more and then go in. Those big old ships. I have a window with that. Hold on. Let's look at some time for some photo reference. Uh, there we go. Uh, when you Google pirate ship you generally get Pirates of the Caribbean images or toys. I don't know why that is, but that's most of what Google's got for, for pirate ships. Um, but here's what I'm kind of talking about, that, that more of a, it's not really like a lean cut through the water thing so much as a big, uh, probably has something to do with sh space inside or something like that. So I want to get more of an arc like this uh, rather than the arc that I currently have. So... I'm going to come in here and delete these. And I'm going to switch 
to uh, using Bezier curves rather than an arc. So Bezier curves can do a couple things. One is this make it real easy to stay in line with this first side because I can pull this along this line. It's going to snap to the line. And that's going to assure that this arc that I'm creating has a nice smooth transition directly into this back section. Um, so something more like, I think, that. Maybe kind of like that. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to flip that again. Uh, that's a little better. I like that. Okay, cool. Um, all right, next. So I'm going to actually I'm gonna leave that line on there. I'm going to take this and make it a group. And that's just for my own reference. I don't know how much of that will end up being final geometry, but um, back here, when I was looking through those images again, um, oh, I have so, so many Chrome windows open right now. I'm sorry. If I struggle, it's because I'm struggling. All right. So back here, we have kind of this boxy section. And some of these I looked at, they're a little more elaborate than others. But I'm going to kind of go with almost a squarish shape right here to start with. I will come back and we'll probably end up molding it a little, modeling it a little bit. Um, but I think initially what I want to do is just kind of have a big rectangle back there. See like right here, have these straight walls. So I'm going to try to stick with something along those lines first. So if I look at this, I'm thinking something kind of like, like that, or actually, well, it'll go both directions. So something like that. And from this then, I'm gonna drop a line straight down. All right. I'm gonna grab, you know, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my uh, I do have a shortcut key assigned to this, but all I'm using is the standard Bezier curves extension. There's a handful of extensions out there for Bezier curves. And um, they all have different strengths, that sort of thing. I use the very simple one that's from the SketchUp team. Um, not, not, not showing, you know, preferences or anything like that. It's just the one that I started using first and just kind of ended up getting kind of stuck on. I just use it a lot. Um, but there are, I think, Fredo has a Bezier tool. There's, there's a handful of Bezier tools. Some of them are really cool because they'll actually remember the information you use to create the curve. So you can go back and edit it later, which is really nice. This one doesn't, it just creates a, just creates geometry in an arc. Um, but like I said, it's just happens to be the one I use. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna draw that again. I didn't, I didn't like that down a little bit further. So again, this is why I'm using Bezier. I can pull straight down the blue line. That's going to give me, make sure that arc is going to go straight into that line. And I can come over here and I can hit a green line and drag across. That's going to assure again that at the bottom, I get something connecting like this. So one of the questions that maybe you guys have already asked, or maybe it's coming, uh, am I going to model half of this? And this is a perfect example of something that yes, I will probably model in half. Um, I'm doing my initial work though, to just kind of mock up what the shape's going to look like, uh, the full thing, but we'll come back. I'll come back and yes, I will probably model this just one half at a time and then join it together afterwards. I have to admit, I'm, I'm, ad I'm finding some things where Matt has spoiled me. I definitely... <laughs> Like I said, him him jumping around. First off, him setting everything up. I, you guys, this is confidence, Kay. When you throw something on the internet, you can say this is confidence. It's a rule. You guys can't tell anybody. Um, don't tell Matt because he'll get a big head. He'll get all <laughs> proud, and he'll be impossible to work with. He might be listening right now. Oh crap. <laughs> um, but yeah, but the other thing, um, this thing is 
kind of driving me nuts. So normally Matt has this nice boom mic he puts up high and I don't have to worry about talking into it. I mean, I, if you guys watch our skill builder videos, hopefully you do on, if you don't check them out on YouTube, weekly videos under 10 minutes, got some great tips for using SketchUp and different workflows, that kind of thing. So for, for, uh, that I use the same setup. It's actually in the same room. You guys probably recognize this pretty close to this exact setup. Um, and I record into this and it's not that big a deal. I just kind of, kind of go, but something about this, like while I'm trying to model, I, I keep, I'm literally finding the urge to push it out of my face as I go. So, <laughs> oh, Matt. All right. Um, I'm going to come in here now and I'm going to get uh, kind of a swooping curve. Actually, I want to kind of do both because I want to, I want to come out like that and then come back a little bit. Do I want to do that? Maybe I do. I don't know. I'm going to draw some arcs and see how they look and then maybe draw and redraw said arcs. All right. So first one. And come back like that a little bit, and then, ooh, might be pretty happy with that. Look at that from the side. That's pirate shippy, right? That looks good. Looks good from the front, top. All right, um, I'm gonna finish cutting this thing in half, and then. Grab that and delete it. All right. I'm going to triple click. Oh, actually, it's already in something right now. It's in a container already. Um, that's good. I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to grab Pirate Mark, and I'm going to put him on his own layer because i got to turn him off because I'm finding the urge to delete him. It's just it's a thing. It's a reflex. Erase, drag across there, get rid of him, but... Um, but he's he's the guy who tells my tells me you'll be right I'll be right back. Um, he's all pirated up. I feel it feels like a shame to delete him. So <laughs> I'm gonna put him on a layer called Mark. I'm gonna turn Mark off. All right. There's a safe way to get rid of Mark. No deletions necessary. Okay. So we got half a sh half a half a ship here. This this needs to be reversed. Super. Oop, this needs to be reversed too, doesn't it? And I can actually get rid of some of these extra lines. Cool. All right, I'm going to take this now, this half, and I think I made it. It's a group right now, so I'm going to right-click and make it into a component. And I'm going to call it half a ship. Nothing special other than just making it a component. Now I'm going to take it, option to make a copy, scale to flip it, minus one, and then we'll just slap these two back together. Okay, um, I'm going to take this moment to brag about myself. I don't know if anybody has already caught this, but if you look up at the top here, See where it says ship.skp rather than untitled? That's me growing. I have, uh, I have actually gone ahead and saved this model once uh, so I can just go to file and hit save again. And that, hap that figures. <laughs> I had some problems with my text earlier, and rather than delete it, I tried to just fix it. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let SketchUp do it or once that. All right, now let's uh, let's get lofty. So as I thought about what's going to be the best way to do this, to put all these pieces together, um, I think lofting is going to be the easiest. We'll see. I don't know for sure because um, I was thinking just to start playing around, I could take this part through like this, and that's that's a pretty solid beginning right there. Um, and then from there, I can grab these pieces and I could just see if I can get a nice loft ship bottom loft there so let's see how that works out uh, I'm going to go view tool palettes and I'm going to turn on wait for it what am I looking for oh curve aloft <laughs> all right there we go turn on curve aloft and it's on my other screen 
There we go. And with these selected, I'm just going to hit uh, this right here. And that's going to give me my initial loft. Um, looks okay. Let's. I'm going to go ahead and click it and see how that turns out. I am not unhappy with that. That's looking pretty slick. That's that's Bodhi shaped. Um, all right, so right now there's a couple things that I am seeing I want to do. Um, I want first thing is I want this deck, this piece right here, to kind of come up in the front. I mean, like a again, if anybody out there is a boat people. Let me know. <laughs> this front uh, deck thingy, like where the 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 pointy part, the part where if you're in Jaws four, you spear the shark with that part. I know there's a it's not it's not actually called a Jaws spear. It has a name, but where that part comes up, I kind of want the front of the ship to come up a little bit. This could, you know what? Is that uh, the bow? Yeah, the bow. The bow. bow. <laughs> the, you guys may have caught on to this at this point. But most of my ship-related knowledge comes from cartoons. So <laughs> if in the end, this looks like something that's like Captain Hook's ship from Peter Pan, it's because I'm drawing from my own personal experience, which is living in Colorado. We don't have a lot of ships here to begin with. Nope. No water, really, uh, around us. It's canoes, landlocked. maybe? <laughs> I think I've, I've been on more paddle boards than I have boats. So, yes, the bow. Thank you, Christopher Ryan. You're now my ship guy. <laughs> you are first mate Christopher, and uh, I'm going to just defer all of my boat-related questions to Christopher Ryan. <laughs> Paul has a question. He's asking how SketchUp determines what is an inside or outside face. Good question. Um, when you create a face, if I create it on the ground, uh, well, I'm not on the ground anymore because I have a model. You guys have probably done it before in an empty model. You draw something on the ground, and it always draws it gray face up. The assumption is that you're going to be push-pulling, so the bottom face becomes the white face, and the top becomes uh, the inside. It assumes that you're going to create a volume from that. Um, there's a whole bunch of rules on the inside of how it does all that determination. I, I won't lie. I'm not able to tell you exactly what all those are, um, but there's a, a certain amount of intelligence or that sort of thing in there that says when it should be a front face, when it should be a back face. If it's not, if it's incorrect, um, that's right click, reverse faces. Some people actually uh, who are real concerned about that will map reverse faces to a shortcut key and you can just tap on it. Um, all right, so as I did this, I got this done. I'm really feeling this feels more like a speedboat kind of thing. I do want this to come out a little bit more and then kind of whoop in like that a little, give me a little more uh, width to my geometry. So I'm going to get rid of my loft. I am going to get rid of this line right here. And I'm going to uh, I'm gonna put a line right here. And I'm going to put a line right here. And I'm going to go do another Bezier curve. So again, I'm going to pull this first one out like this. I'm going to come out a little bit further than I did last time. Like that straight across and then, oh, yeah, I think that's better. Yeah, I like that better. All right. The other thing I was talking about is, I'm going to get kind of fancy here. I want this front to kind of swoop up a little bit. Actually, no, maybe I don't. Maybe what I want to do is actually cut this back down afterwards. I like that better. I'm going to a little more control by cutting it down. So thanks for being here while I had that conversation with me. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to grab these lines right here. Same thing I did before. Curve aloft and uh, throw something on there. Yeah, I feel better about that. That feels, that feels gooder than it did before. I bet you didn't think you were going to get English lessons here too, huh? <laughs> Gooder than it was. All right. I'm going to take this now, and I'm going to explode it. I'm committing. 
It is now part of the body. And I'm gonna do a little cleanup here. I'm gonna smooth some of these lines out. All right, so now I officially have one hull piece. Oh, you can see right there, see that little white line? That is indicating to me that I have inside, probably have a surface there that needs to be removed. So if I peek in, I'm just gonna shove my head inside here. Yep, I don't want this. So I can select and delete that piece. One more chunk right here. I don't need this either. Some extra lines in here. All right. Um, I am going to stick with, I do have these lines up the middle because it is two halves. The components are two separate pieces. I'm going to leave that for right now. I'm not going to mess with that. Um, we'll come back and merge it together later. Actually, it won't even be too big of a deal to merge it because um, of some of the stuff I'm going to do uh, as we move forward here. Uh, bonjour, David. You just heard half of the French that <laughs> I am able to speak. That was pretty good. Thank you. My daughter's in French, so oh, nice. she gets me for not knowing anything about that. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. So here's our, this is our initial shape. Now, there's a couple things, couple details I want to put on here. One is, I believe it's the keel. Look at me with my, I lied. I'm, I'm totally all over this maritime wordiness. The, uh, the piece of wood that kind of goes all the way down the middle there. So I actually kind of want a rectangle to follow this shape all the way up and then out here. Um, so I'm going to use, for the most part, I'm going to use, I'm going to use push pull and I'm going to create a square rectangle that I'm going to just pull up the middle here. And then at the end, I'm just going to run it long. So I'm going to create, I'm going to create a line real quick right now. I'm going to start referencing this line and just kind of go up here. All right. I'm going to actually take that. And bring it down just a little bit. So it's like a continuation of that arc. It goes like that. Same thing down here. I'm going to grab this bottom line. Zoom in here nice and tight. And scoot that over there. Because um, I'm going to use follow me, like I said. I'm going to have follow me. I'm going to have a shape here. I'm going to pull it all the way up and through there. So one of the things that, you, that happens with uh, follow me is a lot of times, rather than starting uh, at the end, what I'll try to do is have these extension lines. So I want to start in front and in back. The reason for that, the main reason for that is like right here. If I did a follow me and I followed the shape right up to here, it would end right here. So perpendicular to this line, it would end. And I might have my geometry like sticking back into here or something like that. By putting a line on here, I'm assured that all of my geometry is going to continue on out and I can come back. It's easier to come back and trim it than to try to build it back up past where the follow me ends. So um, that's a good tip. If you're ever going to do a follow me, just create a little extra geometry. It's going to make stuff a lot easier for you. All right. So I want this to, again, I'm just drawing half. I'm drawing the, the I'm drawing half a keel and that's going to come over like this. And I want it to go about there. But if I draw just this, because I'm coming up to this round shape, right? So what's going to happen is, see if I can actually visualize this. Oops. So what's going to happen is, because this line comes up, oh, there it is. I got a little bit of a gap. Um, I could figure out what that gap is and fill it in, but as soon as I come up here and start going along this curve, that gap changes. If you look up here, if I look at it at the end, that's a pretty severe gap. So from straight across, I need it to fill in all this space right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this that I started and I'm going to make it significantly, like way bigger than it has to be. Because what that's going to do is it's going to give me, there we go, a piece inside here that I can trim to this complex curve. 
Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this shape and I'm going to make it a group. I don't want this to immediately merge with this other shape. I know sometimes when you do something like this, uh, your geometry stays far enough apart. Merging happens anytime lines intersect lines. So if you have two faces that just cross through each other and the lines don't actually intersect, you can actually put geometry over itself without too much sticking. That can happen. And sometimes that happens with follow me. Um, but what I might have happen is one edge might hit a vertice in this mesh or something like that. And then all of a sudden it's going to get merged together. So I'm going to put this in a group that's going to create my keel piece all as one separate group outside of my main geometry. And this is kind of a cool thing too. If I select just like a normal follow me, I'm just going to come up here, select my path, select my extra geometry at the end. Then I'm going to hit follow me. And right now you see, I can't pick on it cause it's in a group, but what I can do is without leaving follow me, I can right click. I can say, edit group and I'm still in follow me with the same path selected. So I can just click right here and there it goes. All right. So let's back up and look. That's what it did. It went all the way up and then it came all the way out. And the nice thing is, like I said, if I click out here, that groups geometry is totally separate from the rest of the model. So I don't have to worry about it merging together or anything like that. All right, I'm going to take a moment and read what you guys are talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm reading to myself. <laughs> um, what's the command to automatically copy that rectangle to the other side? Um, oh, I didn't copy it over here. I'm working on two component halves, remember? So this whole thing is one piece. So all I'm doing is working inside of this. So when I created that group, it automatically created it in the other half because I have two separate pieces. So I didn't do, there was no sneaky command I did to make that happen. That just happened because of the component that's broken in half already. Hope that makes sense. All right. Um, oh, hi, Dan. Sorry you were late, but that's cool. Thanks for joining us. Um, So let's hop in here. I'm going to do a little bit of editing right now. I actually do want this to kind of stick like that. Um, something's got to change up here. This is a little excessive. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to see again, based on my extensive knowledge of ships, I think that looks like a thing that could be. I actually might come back here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do, there we go. I like that. That looks That's, nice. Uh, it does look nice. All right. Um, the Yen says uh, they explode it every time, but now they won't. So obviously it's, that's, that is an up to you thing. Um, you can, ideally you want your geometry to be uh, in groups as it needs to be. Um, it's your call on when you want to explode it, when you want to merge geometry back together. Um, I do, I don't need this, uh, extra geometry inside here. This, this chunk on the inside can actually go away. So at some point I will probably, maybe we'll do it now. I will probably come back in and merge this geometry with the rest. Uh, the only reason I'm hesitant right now is one of the things I want to do is put kind of like a guardrail type shape around here. And I think that geometry is going to end up merging with this geometry. So I'm going to keep it in a separate group for right now, but eventually this will actually end up being merged with this piece. We talked about this, probably every model we've done so far, but your, your actual modeling technique will, uh, vary depending on the usage of this model. When you're done, it's always a good idea to group geometry, to keep it from sticking to itself. That's kind of the main reason people group geometry. <clears throat> Excuse me. One more. Oh, and your your first mate just got back to you on what that uh, part mm. of the ship is called. It's the prow. Am I saying that right? The prow, of course. <laughs> of 
Thank you, Christopher. I apologize for not giving you one more time on that one. I jumped <laughs> ahead. That was all me. I'm sorry. The bow and the prow. Just the front of the boat's just owie. <laughs> so um, I forgot what I was talking about. I choked. I coughed a little bit. I drank some coffee. So, oh, yeah. What are you going to do with the model? So depending on, like, if you're going to 3D print it, obviously it has to be solid. It has to all be one group. Um, that's the way to go. If this is something where this is a, piece, a, a model, something you're going to build, then you want to break it apart and group it by the logical pieces that you're actually going to need. Um, it really comes down to how you want to do it. Um, there's a handful of different ways to go about that process. The thing that I will, I will uh, advocate for is as you're creating geometry, just make sure you do group your pieces. Don't uh, end up with just a bunch of loose geometry all over the place. It makes it harder on yourself if you ever have to go back and change it. If you're working with anybody else, they'll appreciate it because there's nothing worse than getting somebody's model, which is just a bunch of loose geometry and you have to go do something to it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's your call, I guess. Um, Christopher, we did do a check-in on it this morning. I know you're a little late. We'll come back. I'll talk about Iron Man and best bus ever, uh, when we take a break in a little bit, but it's going good. All right. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna leave this separate for right now. I'm going to come in here and I want to put like a little guard raily wall kind of thing here that's a tech that is what they're called guard raily christopher will back me up on this one guard raily type thing <laughs> all right so i'm gonna create that shape right there and i'm gonna do follow me again i'm gonna grab this and i'm going to say follow me and grab this right here boom and look at how that merges right in the front of the sh Ooh, shivers look at how perfect that is that's <laughs> awesome so this is cool because I'm going to be able to kind of bury that in the end. And if I need to, I can come back later and uh, I'll clean that up. So it all, all merges together real nice. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here, but up here, up high, I don't actually need to do follow me because it's just the two pieces. So I'm going to do instead is use offset. And I don't need to offset this whole shape. A lot of times when we use offset, we grab a shape like this, hit offset and just pull it in you know, however far we need to go, but you don't have to use the whole surface. You can actually just pick a couple edges in this case, or one edge, two edges, three edges, some edges beforehand, and then hit offset. And what I'm gonna do is I want this guardrail to be the same, or wall thingy to be the same width. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna offset it to right here. So even though this isn't in plane, I can still use it as a kind of a reference line there. And then same thing with push pull. Because I can select now, this geometry is broken, so I can select that geometry. I can hit push pull, and I can say move it from. Oop. Oh, you know what I did? I made. You don't know what I did. You don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I made a change. I'm trying to remember where, where it is. General. Uh, nope. I made a change for a video I made on. Uh, aha made a video for using a tablet, uh, a Wacom tablet in SketchUp, which was a really cool video. It was a lot, it was neat to learn about, but I changed one of the settings, which is allow or disallow pre-select for push pull because that's preferable with the tablet, but I never changed it back. That was the thing I just had a conversation with myself about. Push pull, this is gonna go from, so with the already selected, so I pre-select turned on. So my surface is selected. The nice thing about being able to pre-select is I can use reference points that have nothing to do or are nowhere near the actual geometry is going to be push-pulled. So I can drop down here and say from here up to here. And there we go. So now I got that going. Nice. All right. It seems like there's always sort of a something maybe like this in here too. Tight. Whoops. Be hiding a lot of geometry. So this is not uh, obviously. This is where my arc started. So even though it looks like this line is straight, it's just slightly off axes. So after I save, Control S, I can hop over here and show you. If I go to Styles, and I hit Edit, and I go to my lines. If I change from all the same to by axes, 
by axis color codes all lines that are in line with a uh, one of the axes and it'll work on arcs too so if you have a circle or an arc and one segment of it is parallel to an axis it'll color code those but you can see this line all the way from the very beginning is just slightly off of straight so if i come here and i click and drag this out you can see there's my line so it doesn't quite if i zoom way in here it's just slightly off of that line so that's why I had to use uh, modifier key on my erase to smooth these two together rather than delete it. All right. I'll come out here, do the same, same clean up here, option, and then just get rid of these extra lines. And I'm gonna bring that all the way back. I gotta, I gotta close this. <laughs> I don't like the way this is jumping over here. Right, we'll close that. Doesn't need to be as big either. I need drawing space. I don't need space for information. Okay, cool. So come in along. Looks like a very safe pirate ship. Like That's you can right. fall off of it. OSHA is really. <laughs> Pirates were all about OSHA, exactly. keeping things safety. We'll put the uh, the tether tie downs near the mast later on, so we can tether in, that kind of thing. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look inside here. It looks like I have a surface inside here too. So if I pop over here, yep. So I don't actually. Whoa, too much, too much deleting. What am I deleting? Apparently. Hmm. Still something in there. Peek inside. Oh. Oh, it's right up against the wall. <laughs> there we go. Uh -huh. All right. I don't know what I'm doing here. Not sure what's going on. I thought I broke it. There we go. Get rid of that extra line. Got an extra line here, it looks like. I don't know. With a simple surface like that, it's probably easier for me just to delete it and draw it back in and try to figure out. No, something something came off axes and I, I messed something up. That looks good. Oh, your first mate had a correction there. It's not a prow. It's actually the bow, bow sprit. I think I'm saying that correctly. Good to know. Thank you, Christopher. All right. That's the one you get. <laughs> no more misinformation, man. I stood <laughs> up for you. On you. I stood up for you in front of everybody. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right there. That looks, looks nice. Ah, still got a little line down here. I wonder if I have some hidden geometry. Let's go uh, take a look at the old hidden geometry. Nope, looks good to me. Oh. There we go. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> All right, but we're looking good. Looking good. All right, let's... Uh, Let's carry on. That looks pretty good. We need some more. We need some more stuff here. Um, I'm thinking what might be kind of cool is putting like a handrail. <laughs> Apparently, I'm very safety conscious for these <laughs> these pirates. Um, but a handrail that kind of goes along here. They're, pirate ships seem to be ornate things. Um, so I'm not gonna get too crazy, but maybe like just a little cap piece that goes across there. But one of the things I notice on pirate ships is we do have kind of a um, like a little spot where they drop the uh, rope rope ladder down to get into the boarding ships or or sh you know the plank goes out of. So I'm gonna put uh, 
I don't know if that has a name, Christopher. You're going to have to let me know on that one. Um, so I'm going to come out here to, let's say, here. <laughs> it's one of those exacting designs that I'm doing. And I'm going to say it's about ooh, that wide. And I'm going to come back up to here. All right. And I want to actually round this off a little bit. So I'm going to grab the midpoint here. I'm going to come and put that. And I'm going to actually close it by double clicking. Double clicking gets rid of the excess when I put an arc. And if I come over into this corner and double click again, it'll put that same shape there. Ooh, I think we have competition for another first mate here. Oh, boy. Uh, fight, fight. I mean, <laughs> no, don't fight. Dan says uh, the keel <laughs> runs from stem to stern. So you have combined the stem with the sprit. <laughs> We're not expert boat makers. I am so embarrassed, you guys. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we were talking about learning something new today, and I'm done. So, yeah, you guys are on your own. <laughs> cool. Don't make an actual boat after this. <laughs> no. It might sink. That's Odds are good. <laughs> I'm going to run this on out here. Um, and I'm just going to use Intersect. I'm not using solid tools or anything like that. But before I use Intersect, I am going to clean up my cutter. So I'm going to hold down my modifier key. Option on Mac. This is Control on Windows to get to smooth these lines. So they're still there, but when they're smoothed, smoothened, smoothed, <laughs> then I can select these three pieces. And I'll describe this piece too. And I can right click and say intersect faces with selection. And that'll give me a nice clean cut. And because I smoothed, um, well, the ones right here didn't get, this one is a little bit different because this is actually where this surface meets the floor. So um, that one came back, but you can see the one that I erased from here went away because I deleted that, that piece. These guys right here, Get rid of this extra stuff. You actually delete these lines, erase these lines and this line because they're all in, in plane with each other. And then I can grab these two and reverse them. Actually, let's back up because I'll show you how I should have done that. When you intersect two pieces, that's going to cut the pieces and leave. It doesn't do any kind of, it's not like solid tools when I use if I use solid tools, I cut stuff out. It automatically goes back and figures what's the inside and outside now that you did a cut on a solid. Because if it's solid, of course, it always knows where's inside, where's outside. When I do intersect, it's literally just slicing geometry. One piece of geometry at another piece of geometry. And then it leaves the, the pieces left over behind. So with this one, I'm going to delete this real quick. Actually, I don't need any. All I need is this, this cutter right here. Let me get rid of that. All right, so when I look at this, when it cuts this, those were those those curved faces were uh, inside out because this is what was left over. To save myself, I can right click, reverse my faces, then select these three pieces like this, right click, intersect faces with selection, and now if I delete this, you see I have that facing the right way again. So just save myself a little bit of work by reversing it before I do the uh, that follow me. Nope, not wrong, wrong step. Uh, reverse that before I do the intersect rather than after. All right. So that could look something like that. Cool. Oh, something happened here. I don't know what I did there. All right. Looks good. Um, now I want to go put that uh, that handrail in here. Or that uh, hand, I don't know, thing. I'll do something like, just like that. I think that'll, let's see. Let's do a quick test here. See how that looks. No, I might come out a little bit, a little bit more. Maybe give it a little... A little bit bigger, like that. 
All right, I'm gonna do the same thing I did down below. I'm gonna double click and make this a group. And I'm using a group in this case and not a component. Um, I recently read some on the forum was talking about groups versus components and when do you use what. Uh, generally speaking, my mindset on it is if it's a thing, like a piece of something that may exist in the real world, I make a component out of it. Uh, if it's a container, temporary, or to hold multiple pieces together, I make a group out of it. That's not like carved in stone. That's my own personal preference. But uh, yeah, let me know how, how you guys use it. Tell me, tell me why I'm wrong. Or if you have your own personal preference or workflow that you've come to use. Oh, this is all, let's say this was originally a line, but when I did my push pull, I broke that geometry. Not a big deal. It's really not that long. So almost there. Stay on target. There we go. <laughs> Boom. All right. So I'm going to take that now. I think that's a complete path. And I'm going to go follow me. Right click, edit, not explode. There are two E's right next to each other. That can be dangerous. Edit group, pick the geometry. Let's take a look at what, how that looks. Let me do a little bit of cleanup, but I'm, I'm liking that. Um, all right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to undo, undo, and I'm going to show you why. So when follow me you saw those segments that got created when you run follow me similar to push pull um it's gonna honor broken uh geometry so if i want this loop right here christopher says he uses a combination of them to name his components all right and then Paul... Too, because you're too lazy. <laughs> because I left out that part. <laughs> hey, if, as long as there's a reason, I'm cool with it. That's fine. <laughs> uh, Paul wants to know if it would be useful to weld the curved edges. Oh, hmm. gold star for Paul. Yes. Um, Are, is Paul the first mate now? Whoa. Uh, whoa. <laughs> there's going to be some, some dueling happening. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take all of this, and I'm going to go to extensions, and yes, I'm going to weld it. That way, when it, I'm, I'm good with it breaking some spots, like right here, makes sense I'll have a break, right here on the back corner, um, that's all fine. But right here, it'd be nice if that was one smooth piece going along. Same thing with this long piece here. Um, it did break, again, because of the way I uh, push-pull that geometry up. Or no, I, I follow me, so I actually created new geometry. But from here on in, I'd really like this to all be one line. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab it and at Paul's recommendation, I'm going to go ahead and weld it. And there we go. All right. So now I'm going to grab that again, do that same, same thing I just did one more time. Click, 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 and then follow me. Edit group, pick it and look at the difference now. Ooh, clean. Awesome. That's pretty cool looking. That looks good. Um, all right, I'm going to save. Um, welcome. Welcome from Twitch. We were never neglecting you guys on Twitch. They're just, uh, there's not as many of you guys. I don't know why. <laughs> You gotta get your get your Twitch brethren online. <laughs> let them let them all hang out with us. Ahoy, Alejandro! All right. Um, so yeah, as I'm coming through here, you guys see something that doesn't work, you don't like, please let me know. Um, I got somebody. Somebody called me out. Uh, I've actually had a couple of these where somebody said. Uh, that I had, uh, I was a novice modeler or something I was doing was, you know, baby SketchUp user. I can't remember the <laughs> words that were used. And I'm, I'm not a defensive type person. I'm not going to get upset by that in the slightest. But if there's a workflow or something that I'm doing you don't understand or you have a better way of doing it, 
I don't care if you call me out. That's great. But tell me the better way to do it. I mean, this is this this whole thing is so we can all hang out together and do some sketch up and learn from each other. And I got to say, I've already learned. I've learned plenty of tips from you guys through doing videos like this, meeting in person or uh, uh, on the forum. So if you guys have recommendations for me, I am so not above getting your advice. Um, so don't wait for me to call out how should I do this. Feel free to throw those thoughts out anytime you like. All right, I'm going to put some stairs in here because this would be hard to get up. I'm assuming this is six-ish feet tall. Um, I haven't really set a scale for this, but, and you've seen me model, no, there's prob that's probably not really a weird thing. That's kind of, fortunately, a thing I do. Um, so I'm going to take this line right here for my stairs, and I'm going to divide. And when you, there's a couple ways you can divide. You can drag your mouse up and down until you see the number of divisions you think are right. And when you do that, if you hold still, it'll actually tell you the, the size of those divisions too. So I can come in here, one foot steps. Uh, let's get them under 10. There we go. That looks good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. And something I could do here is grab this. There's, so there's a couple ways. So I could come in here with lines and go click, click, and just kind of copy them up over and over and over again. The other option is to take this one right here, click option, click it to here, and then just type X. I forgot how many divisions there were. Eight? Of course. Eight. And that'll give me all those, all those pieces. Um, now I have to push them back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same. Hmm. How am I going to do this? This is the spot where I start to struggle with stairs every time I do it this way. Ooh, Anna has a yes. possible suggestion. Could it be possible to select all of those curves first by selecting a box on an elevation and then unselecting the interior and the floor plan? Um, almost anything's possible <laughs> if you put your mind to it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That would that would be possible. Um, I'll say with selection, I do a whole lot of uh, group selection with modifier keys, so I drag windows a lot. Um, if it's easiest to switch the side and do a, a select like that and then come back around here and clean it up, sure. If that works, that's that's awesome. That's a great way to do it. Uh, what I end up doing a lot of is holding down modifier keys, which uh, you guys can't see today, but if I'm in select and I hold down shift, I get the plus minus. I don't use this one very much because what the plus minus will do is if I drag a window anything that's in there that's selected becomes deselected and deselected becomes selected. So if I reverse that, these lines came turned off, these ones turned on. So what I usually use instead is either the option key, which is plus only. So now anytime I drag anything new that's not selected inside the window is going to get selected. Or I hold down the option with shift, which gives me the minus, which lets me go in and remove selections. So when I do selections for cleanup, that kind of stuff, I use those, those modifier keys a lot. Um, we're going to bring this back here, let's say exactly this much. <laughs> and how many steps do we have here? So I have, this one will go back to, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seems like a nice round number. So if I take this and divide that into... 10 segments, that works. So I take this one, push it back to that first segment. If I go push this one back, something you guys will notice is my segments are gone now. Oh no, oh yes. So if I, come, well actually this one should go all the way back, shouldn't it? Anyhow, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, and the styles. I rarely do this, but I'm going to turn my endpoints on. All right, see how right now I have these little endpoints all the way across here? If I use a push-pull, when I pull back to, say, this point right here and release, look what happens. These endpoints all disappeared because it created new geometry, so it went away. So what are you to do? 
Well, this is another spot that group can help out. So what I can do is I can come in here, I can grab that line, just those 10 lines, those 10 edges, right click and make it a group. Again, that's gonna isolate geometry. So if I look, I'm just gonna slide away just for a second, you can see I have this over here. It's kind of interesting, if you grab a surface or a group that's connected to other geometry and you hit make group, it does isolate that geometry, but it doesn't wreck your existing pieces. So it doesn't like, by, by pulling this one piece out into its own group, it doesn't like shatter everything that's connected to it. What it does instead is it makes a duplicate right there. So what I can do now is I can grab this one, push it back, and it did weld that line underneath, but because these were grouped, I still have these so I can click here, come back to, whoops, I can bring it back out, no big deal. Click to there, click to, whoops, a lot of whoopsing. Alejandro says you can also do division in a parallel line to avoid the segments to disappear. Too true, that would work as well. See if I did this right or wrong. R wrong would be right. Right, the, right is the answer, I did it. I did it right. All right. So now that that's done, I can do a couple things. I can get rid of that. Nope, that's not the group. That is the line. Select only groups and delete that. I can also turn off my endpoints because I don't like that. All right, and now I can come in here and get rid of these lines and these lines. And then this line, again, if I erase this one, it's going to break that wall. So this is the one I have to use option erase on to soften. Cool. Um, I just looked at my, uh, my styles window to see if there are any new comments. So that's where I'm at. I will say there are a lot of people across the world tuning in right now. Shout out to uh, Libya, Qatar, Spain, Finland. This is amazing. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Very, very cool. Yeah. I love it. International is awesome. That's, that's really cool. All right. Um, let's see here. What do, oh, I got to put another, another guardrail up. I got to put a, a rail around. Actually, no, I'm going to do something a little different there. Um, let's put like, uh, yeah, let me grab these two lines. Offset that some amount. And I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to option pull it up just a little bit. I'm going to pull it out. Christopher wants to know where the select only groups is. Haha, -ha, I was waiting. I did that. <laughs> Check to see if anyone was paying attention. So that is an extension. Hold on, let me save before I show that to you because I'm good at saving now. Um, that's actually an extension. It is an extension from TomTom Tom called Selection Toys. And it is probably, you know, when people ask you what's your favorite uh, extension, that sort of thing. You have to think about it and there's, there's a bunch of different options, but that's probably one of my go-to, uh, extensions. It's, it's one of those things that, uh, I use every single time and, uh, I don't even think about it. It's, it's just there, uh, with selection toys, you can do things like grab something like this. Oops. Let me get into the groups to get some geometry. Grab like that, right click, and that's what all of these down here. So I can say deselect, select only, select. Um, I have options for instances for, of components or group copies that I have selected. This is the nice one though. Select or select only or deselect is gonna allow me to filter a selection that's already, already picked. So say for example, I wanted to um, color my line segments. That's something that uh, maybe depending on the visualization kind of whatever, um, I want a bunch of lines to be green or something like that. If I hit green now, it's going to fill in just the surfaces. But if I come in here, I could say select only edges. All my, line, all my surfaces are turned off, and now I have only lines picked. So uh, it is an awesome tool. It's free, extension warehouse, um, selection toys from TomTom. Tom. It's, it's a key 
uh, tool. You should definitely grab that if you don't have it or you haven't used it already. All right, back to this thing. So what I'm thinking is rather than do a full rail like we have here, I kind of think maybe we'll do like a uh, baluster kind of thing, uh, little, little vertical pieces. I'm going to grab this chunk right here. Oops, wrong button. That was caps lock. Um, grab this piece right here. I'm going to shift select to turn that off. I'm going to grab a copy of this one. I'm going to hit uh, option to make a copy. And I'm going to go make it vertical up to here. All right, so that's the, the handrail. Actually, I need to check on that because I, I don't think that's solid. Oh, it is. All right, with that selected, I'm gonna come in here and I'll put some like uh, fancy railing thingies, technical term. I'm gonna grab <laughs> this and this, and I'm gonna offset those in, something like that. No, I'm not, I'm gonna just Hashtag OSHA standards here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to give myself a center line. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and so here's something that uh, you may have wondered about at some point in your life, because I know I have. I wonder about things. Um, and you may have a better way to do this. This is a perfect opportunity for you guys to chime in. So what I want to do is I want to find, basically I want to put a point right where this middle would cross, basically, you know, to make a square. So I want to figure out a point, I'm going to put my first uh, vertical in this fence, basically is what it is, right where the same offset vertically as I have horizontally. So there's two ways I think about doing this. One is to grab the rectangle tool, click here, and drag down until I snap square. And if I click there, I know that this point right here is the same distance from the side as it is from the end. The other thing that I would do here is grab this line right here and use rotate, come to the end, option, click, and bring it down. When I drop it on that spot, it breaks that line. So I actually have a point right there that I could then use as that reference. Um, if you guys have ever been in a situation, I seem to hit that a lot. I don't know why, but, um, that is a, a good way to get through that. Same thing down here. Well, this is easy because that point's already in the middle. So don't have to worry about that one. All right. I'm going to come in now, grab a rectangle and go to the middle. And I do want this to be a square piece. I'm going to come out like that. And I'm going to pull that up to the underside here. All right, and I'm going to delete these extra lines because I don't need those. I'm going to grab that like that. And let's see what's the best way to bring this down here. I'm going to turn on my x-ray. Hmm. Dan says that, uh, I think it's Fredo also has a selection tool. Okay. I believe that. I did not know that. Um. Yeah, Fredo and Tom Tom are basically my guys. They're the guys I go <laughs> to, and uh, they they save me heartache on a regular basis. We're getting a lot of Tom Tom love on Twitch too right now. Oh, is Tom Tom there? Is that why? He's actually not. I don't oh. think I see him on. Um, uh -huh. But some people are saying that they really enjoy Tom Tom's extensions. All right, that's I agree. That's I think. Uh, I think that both of them have great extensions. If I didn't think the word would get out, I might call them amazing, but I want to have a big head about it. <laughs> um, I think that uh, Fredo is my go-to for weird geometry. That's probably the thing that I would say, if you have to create geometry, he would be the way to go. Um, and TomTom, Tom, I would say, 
aside, setting aside his sub D tools, his vertex tools, quad face tools, sub D, setting aside that set of tools, I think that TomTom Tom is uh, mostly, I would say, a time saver. He has tools that make it quick and easy to do some stuff that is otherwise uh, d difficult or laborious to do, which I think he actually said that. We had a, I don't know if you guys know, we had, uh, we do a podcast, and on our podcast, we uh, asked TomTom Tom about that, um, about why he makes extensions and that sort of thing, and he said basically the whole thing comes out of laziness. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't want to, any, any place that he can save himself time, he writes an extension is basically what he said, so... I love it. It shows. It comes across. I mean, that's that's definitely, I feel that. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Dan also has another tip. Referencing right. to center of rectangle toggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just did it without ca calling it out. But uh, when I came in here to my rectangle, if you hit the option key, then you input by the middle rather than uh, the outside edge, which is the default. Is ah. the corner. Yes. Thank you, Dan. Keep me honest. Yes. Um, all right. Um, I'm going to, so the corner posts I put on here are all rectangular. This one I split in half because, again, I'm just doing half the ship, so this will join together later on. So a couple things I want to do. One is I want to make my circular, is it baluster? Baluster? Ba there's, a, there's a word that is of or around the word baluster that I want to use, but I don't know it's the right word, so I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to create a circle, and this doesn't have to be a many-sided circle. We already have a lot of geometry here in the hull. Um, you know, if I look at this, we're already, not, and it's not heavy. This is not, this is not a big model by any means, but more, maybe out of habit more than anything else, I do try to keep stuff uh, light if I can. These little baluster maybes, um, don't have to have 24 sides, I think is, the, is what it's at now. So I'm going to drop this down to eight sides, and I'm going to pull out a circle. Martin uh, from Dubai Hi, says, Martin. at this point, he would make a component of the upright, so once it's placed, you can change one, and voila. This is what I, the, when great minds think alike. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Martin. <laughs> That's where we were headed. So... Um, let's just point this out as we go. I'm going to put a circle there and then next to it, I'm going to put an eight sided polygon, pull it out to about the same size. They look the same, don't they? Yes, but no. If I pull up a circle, even though it has the same number of sides, the geometry is the same. If I export this as an STL or something, it's going to look exactly the same. But because I drew it as a circle, SketchUp knows to smooth the edges. So I don't have to go back. Somebody asked about using the eraser tool to smooth it. I don't have to because as a circle, it knows to smooth it already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this circle, make it a component. Baluster. Well, somebody's got to know. That's, it's actually <laughs> an architectural term, is? right? I think so. That like, uh, like stair railing or something like that. I don't think barrister or banister or banister. I think baluster is the vertical baluster. thing. Yeah. Balustrade. Balustrade. Oh, okay. Thank you. Spindle. Balustrade sounds fancier. Balustrade sounds like something you'd find on a on a pirate ship. Or post, he says too. Well, I don't care if that's what it's called or not. That's what we're using for now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take that then, and I'm going to actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in 2D. I'm going to take that and place it. I'm not being OSHA, so I'm not uh, <laughs> actually checking for the, what is it, two and a half inches of space? That, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one right here, option, copy down to here. I'm going to say divide that span by 8. I think that looks good. All right. And I'm going to grab one of these. 
I'm gonna copy that guy right here. We have some pirate singing happening on YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds awesome. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do the same thing. Alt copy. Get it straight down here. Same, same ish space on the end. I'm going to say divide that by 15. 14. Wow. And that looks about right. Cool. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to come in here and get rid of these guidelines because once I merge geometry, well, I don't know if I'll even merge it, but um, if I was to merge it back in, that would create a bunch of line segments. I'd have to go through and delete each one. So I'm going to get rid of that first. I'm going to open up one of these, push, pull up to the bottom. Again, because it's a component, all of those pop up and we got a whole battalion of balustrades. Cool. Control S to save. All right. Our uh, our ship is coming along. Where are we at time-wise? We are oh, it's a little over an hour in. That's Ask pretty sweet. Save, Aaron. Everyone's reminding you to save. Control S, control S. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Thank you, guys. <laughs> oh, it's hard to be bad at stuff. All right. So we're about an hour in, and this is what we got. Quick snapshot. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Um, cool. So let's, uh, let's keep going here. Um, I'm going to pull up a reference image again real quick. And, uh, that's pretty much there. Um, so it looks like most of these have three masts. There's some hot enunciation there. Three masts. You hear the S, the T, and the S. Um, <laughs> one comes from center sh of the ship. One's towards the front, and one looks like it's in back up here. So maybe we'll do that right now. Nope, we won't, because I want to do that after I join the geometry together. So we're going to do the rest of whatever is mirrored. So we're going to come back to masts later. And right now, maybe we'll... Uh, Put some windows in back here. Um, yeah, we'll do some windows wrapping around here. Maybe throw a door. We'll put two doors in, one on each side. And then we'll put some uh, portholes or cannonball shooting openings. Ooh, definitely cannonballs. Wouldn't be a pirate ship without them, right? That's right. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's it's not a ship with it. Right now, it's a glorified rowboat with no masts. You're right. <laughs> um, Dan Sullivan did say to point out, and this is absolutely correct, um, that draw from center, the draw the rectangle from the center, that toggle is not actually part of uh, older SketchUp. You do have to be in 2018 and up to get that tool. So if you run an older version and can't find it, it's because it's not there to be found. Oh, we have some uh, OSHA standards or code standards. Mm -hmm. From Bradley Design, he's Oop. saying spacing of the balusters in a balustrade by code shall be so that you cannot pass a four-inch four. sphere through the opening. Just want to check. Just clarification. <laughs> are we talking about maritime building codes or are we like <laughs> just – I'm just not arguing with you. Are these I, real I'll codes? check anyhow. That's, pirate codes? That's right. <laughs> what does pirate code say? <laughs> so this is seven inches, and uh, I guess take that building code, we're pirates, is the yeah. answer there. Yeah. Is that, is that, so four inches, is that about, that's something to do with children, right? A child can't get stuck in, in there, but, but it's a pirate ship. There's no babies <laughs> on the pirate ship. <laughs> Not allowed. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely none. Someone right. on Twitch is saying that you need the back of the ship needs uh, some slope to it. Uh, back here, are we talking about like doing something fancy, some woo kind of thing going on back here? I think so. Yeah, probably. That ship might have sailed though. 
nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> but I did see, I do see what you did there. All right. <laughs> I'm going to come in here into this group real quick. I'm going to draw a line like that to break this, and then I'm going to drop this down. Because this group is separate, kind of cool, because I can come in and put whatever detail I want back here right now, and I can use this same face right now, as long as I got a little bit of a runway, to come up and follow whatever I end up creating here. Um, well, let's look at some, uh, let's look at some, the back ends of some pirate ships. Some pirate ship booties, if you will. Boring. A little something here. Is that the stern? Should I be looking for a different term? These <laughs> ones just kind of go slopey. That's kind of cool like that. That looks, looks fancy. Um, of course, we've already, <laughs> we've already pretty well established that... Uh, Maybe reality is not real uh, essential to whatever we're doing. Oh, that's kind of nice. Look at that. Look, look, uh, back of a chair thing. All right, maybe, how, how about this? Um, I'm going to stern. Sometimes there is a base sort of thing on the back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good catch, cowboy. Good catch. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, there's some places where that term doesn't work, and I think Stern's one of them. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this. Uh, uh, let's How, how am I going to do this? Let's go up. I'm going to draw. I'm just going to get a working plane here. And I'm going to say this is going to... Actually, I'm going to push this back a little bit further. And I'm going to go, whoops, I created this outside the component. If you ever do that, uh, if you hit Control X to cut that, the geometry you meant to put inside a component, double click to enter the component, and then go to edit, paste in place, it'll put that then inside. You can see how it showed up on both after I did that. All right, so I'm going to say I want to start here. I want to slope up like this. And then I like that little arc we had, so... I'm going to grab my, come up like this, uh, like this, and then maybe like that. That's not going to be pretty. That's going to be ugly. Um, here, let me pull this through real quick. Oh, it's all falling apart. Ah, there we go. Less falling apart. Um, you know what I should have done? I should have done was this. I'm going to pull this through first. Design on the fly, guys. Winging this. But we heard last week that that's what you preferred. Prepared design sounded boring to y'all, <laughs> which works for me. All right. Uh, Dan says you need to be talking pirate lingo when we're modeling a pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> That's what ye wanted. Is that better? <laughs> there we go. Can't be saying y'all, which <laughs> which I picked up. I, I have been yalling a lot more since I got back from uh, Nashville. Oh, yep. That'll it do it. Sunk in. I'm from Atlanta, so it's pretty much all I can say. <laughs> you have a good excuse. I'm from <laughs> Chicago. We don't really, other than occasional <laughs> meh, na nasally A, we don't really have a whole lot of. <laughs> all right. No said with love, Chicago. Be cool. <laughs> um, all right. So I am straight up winging this thing right now, but uh, hopefully you guys see what I'm, what I'm attempting and respect it. I'm going to draw a couple of... Uh, Beziers from here to the middle of this line. First one, I'm going to curve this way. Second one, I'm going to curve this way. And I'll pull that in. Let's see how that looks.
better? Is that improvement all? Yar. Yar. <laughs> yar. <laughs> the salty dogs. <laughs> Somebody was a little late, but they have a question. Um, we can do that. Did you set up the model to mirror your geometry? Yes. If you look right now, I am currently in one component. The other half is a repeat of that component. And we've talked about that, how I don't always do that. But in this case, yes, I did. All right. Somebody do follow me. Here's the thing about follow me. A couple things. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to, I'm going to do some welding. I'm going to get this all welded as one nice curve. But the other thing to remember is follow me. If you select a line and you select a surface, if that line goes past the surface in both directions, you're going to run into some issues. I don't want this to try to follow back this direction. So I'm going to come in here and draw a line real quick that separates. That's going to break this line from this line because I only want to move forward from where this rectangle is. So that's a break. That's the important part. And then like we did before, I grab this line, this line, this line, and this line and weld it so I don't get any seams there. All right, grab those three pieces. Whoops, did that wrong. I tried to save on the fly and it ruined me. All right, grab those lines, follow me. Right click, edit group, pick face. Let's take a look at that. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was excited for a second there, but that got, uh, that made me not happy. All right, so I have to do something a little bit different. Um, so there's a couple things I could do. The issue that's happening right now is, oh, man, you know what? That's actually pretty sweet looking. <laughs> Look at the way that slopes down. This is awesome. I kind of like that. So I might have to just go through back. So two things are going to happen. I'm going to explain what happened, what I could have done to change it, and then I'm going to make this work. So the thing that happened there was there was a transition right here to flat. So I'm going to temporarily hide this group. So it came up, and then what I kind of wanted to do is have it go lay flat and then turn that corner. So I could have done two things. One is I could have built out a little, just even a teeniest bit of a flat section like that, where it would have caused the follow me to go up and then run flat and then turn the corner. That would have fixed that problem that I just saw. Not problem. That would have fixed the, uh, the artistic interpretation of, of follow me that I created. The other thing I could have done was add this like this and then done one follow me, which brought it up and to here, and then stopped. Then I could have gone into that group, drawn a line to break that geometry, and then done a second one to pull it up here, which would have given me a flat rail that whole way. Having said all of that, the way that angles is just cool looking. I really like that. You guys okay if I leave that? I'm, I'm leaving it up to you. This is this is your time too. This isn't Aaron designing in a bubble. <laughs> Dan wants to know if an upright extruder would solve solve this. Um, upright extruder would have fixed one thing, which was is this right here. See that little bit of a slant? It comes back like that. Upright extruder would have fixed that. Okay. Um, I don't think it would have turned the corner correctly though. I could be wrong. But this this introduces. A, a new uh, thing to be taken care of. Um, I'm going to go ahead and orient face it to this white section. Looks good. Um, this is why I'm not upset because I get to go fix it this now. So right coming up here, we're touching, we're touching, we're touching. And then right here, we break. So what I have to do now is somehow get this up there. I'm going to do this a couple different ways. I'm going to save. I'm going to do this first piece by going into move, not selecting anything, and then just mousing over this end piece point right here. Whoops. Mousing over the end point and just taking it straight up the blue axis until it hits the face. And I could actually just do that all the way along this. Let's 
Let's keep looking here. Just tapping up. So the other thing that I could do here, that's actually not too bad because the, I'm moving ends of curves. It's actually pretty easy to move these along. Um, something else I could do here would be to use, uh, what is it, a debo, a debo, a de, a de, <laughs> extensions, <laughs> a debo, push line. And I think this will work because I think I can grab this line, extension, push line, and just push it vertically all the way through. And this is a cool extension because that'll get that all the way through there. Um, and then what I can do after that, I can come in here, merge all this back together. And this is just one face. I'm doing this specifically. Uh, the only reason I'm suggesting this is because I know that I don't actually need this geometry because uh, I know the cap is going to end up welding with that geometry, which we'll actually do. Maybe we'll do that next. Um, all right, so having done that, I can grab this face night right now, intersect with model. That's going to look at this model, this face against any other surfaces in the model and see what happens. And nothing. Like, come <laughs> on, man. <laughs> Hate when that happens. <laughs> All right, I'll try it again. All right, there we go. Intersect faces with model. And there we go. The, see how it broke that surface all the way down? A little gap right here, but I can go ahead and manually break that by just drawing a line like that. Um, something to keep in mind, if I hide this group again, because there's a top and bottom of that rail geometry, I do have two pieces to clean up, but hey, there we go. Not a big deal. All right. Sweet. Whoops. Oh, too much. Get rid of this line I used to break that. Um, unhide. All there we go. There's my railing back in. Cool. Nope. I get in the group for a race. Awesome. That's looking pretty cool. That looks that's slick. All right. So as we were looking through the pirate ship images, um. Bob Ross has a Twitch channel now. <laughs> yeah, know, everyone wants a, the, a name for this ship and a, a flag. Well, all right. Um, wh what do we got? What's what's winning right now? Uh, right now, Aaron Ross. That's that's the <laughs> one. That is the only uh, name we have. <laughs> oh, you think it would like something like a? I don't know what like a. The, like the rusty mouse or something like that. Don't we have a? <laughs> <laughs> the rusty mouse. Yar. That's right. As long as you say R after it, you can call it <laughs> anyone. All right, you guys keep brainstorming. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to need to work on that one. Yep. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, well, th that, that can keep, keep playing that one out. <laughs> um, uh, but I was just saying, yeah, I did see... That, Bob Ross is making a comeback. How cool is that? That's dude's, very cool. Dude's gone. And I remember, like, there's this weird lull in time after school when I was little where there wasn't cartoons on, but it hadn't flipped over to, like, evening sitcom TV. And that was when Bob Ross just hung out there and just painted stuff. And I just remember watching him just, you can't help but like, just be just super chill and just, <laughs> so therapeutic it is he's like he he made asmr before anybody had the inkling to like give that a name 
You just you just chill with Bob. That's all you can do. That's all. That's what we need now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need more Bob. <laughs> Get your Bob on. <laughs> all right. So one of the things I was saying I was seeing in a lot of those pictures is this back section has kind of like a cantilevered bay. Somebody called it a bay um, sticking out the back. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I want to throw something like that on here. Um, go back to my pirate ship images. Uh, let's see. Just tried to use my 3D mouse on the Chrome. Did not work. So here's a little thing sticking out back here. I don't know, Christopher, do you know what the name of that little room back there is? That little cantilevered bay out there? We need our first mate. That's right. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of thinking, oh, here's, here's, no, that's kind of, oh, I guess this right here. So it kind of cantilevers out. It's actually got these cool little uh, things that I also don't know what they're called underneath them. So let's, let's uh, take a stab at that. That's only going to take a few minutes to, to get that geometry popping out. We'll throw some windows in there. I'm anxious to get to the masts too, guys. All right, so I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to start drawing some geometry on here. Um, look at my hidden geometry because I want to, oh, we got plenty of space. Make sure to put this all inside the rectangular area, and I'm going to pull this out that far exactly. Double click to take the other side out. It's all right. It's not, I don't love it, but I want more. I want it to come out more. Uh, Christopher doesn't know the name. Darn it. <sighs> all right. <laughs> Guess we'll uh, stick with calling it cantilever thingy. <laughs> all right. I'm going to grab, I'm just going to keep this super simple. It does have a little bit of a roof there, so I'm just going to grab these lines and pull them up to something like that. Oh, some people are saying that the model is out of focus and it's a little pixeled. Have you guys tried going like this? We may be, <laughs> we may have a little uh, lag going on. Um, let, me, let me sit still for just a moment. Is that better? How does that look, everyone? It might be really still. Does it help? <laughs> uh, Thor said yes. Okay. <laughs> We're good then. Cool. <laughs> All right. So uh, I got a little bit of a thing right here. Um, I do want to do just a little bit of a return. Right here like that. I don't know. No, that looks dumb. Why did you let me do that? All right, I'm going to do a little bit of an overhang just because I come from building design. I can't not do it, I guess. I don't know. Something like that. I'm going to take that and I'm going to pull it out past the end like that because this side is going to be a little different because the slope's different. So I'm going to pull this out like this. And then pull this straight down. I hear the, there's a rumor that uh, people can do math to figure out geometry. I, I, I don't, I, I'd imagine it's true, but uh, I'm not big on the mathing. Yeah. Me and the math. Not a good mather either. No, we don't, we don't have history, not positive history. We have a lot of history, like, like taking algebra more than once kind of history exactly. because uh, math's not cool to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Christopher, so cool. first mate's back with an answer. Ooh, the it's galley. The galley. I did not know that. Super. That's awesome. We have learned. See, we learned another thing. Who would have thought? that you could come to a live stream <laughs> put on by a 3D modeling software company and learn knowing more about the parts of Pirate Chip. I'm going to watch Pirates of the Caribbean tonight. <laughs> that does sound like a great idea. <laughs> Vlad wants to uh, know if it would be useful to use the Follow Me tool right now. Um, yes. So the reason I did not get into the Follow Me tool, well, there, we can see it right here. 
Um, I just did, I just pulled this up to create this, but you can see there's two different sizes. This wing is a lot longer than this wing, so it's asymmetrical. So I actually had something going uh, incorrect, or not incorrect, It was they weren't the same. Um, so this little overhang piece that I created is actually different profile here than it is here. You can see underneath, this side is longer than this side. So I actually had a non-symmetrical corner right there. Um, in uh, a house, you'd end up playing with the fascia sides or the overhang length to get that to line up. And that's basically what I did. Um, in house building terms, I maintained a fascia size all the way around and ended up changing my overhang lengths to make that work. So if both these slopes were the same, I could have drawn that profile once and just swept it around with follow me. But because they were different, I had to actually uh, create that geometry separate. Ah, that makes sense. Good question. Good catch. Dana wants to not be nitpicky, but bring it. He sees no <laughs> reference to any openings for ladders in uh, gunnels and historic sailing vessels. And I could have missed. Well, Dan. <laughs> uh, you're, you're talking about this thing that I referred to as a thing. <laughs> It is possible that that doesn't exist. But again, what I would say is in Pirates of the Caribbean, there's a plank in one of them. That is true. And it does come out at a lower height, I think. Maybe not. Maybe it's up on top. I don't know. But wasn't it cool? And did you learn something about how I welded before? Follow me. <laughs> That's really the important thing here. Exactly. Um, yeah. In addition to not doing great in my math classes, I did not ace history. So... <laughs> We may not be absolutely, uh, yeah, spot on as far as uh, accuracy goes. So I appreciate you looking into that for me. <laughs> All right. I'm going to create a quick cor – is this a corbel? Am I drawing a corbel without knowing it? Christopher, looking This at is you. actually an architectural term too, so you guys want to beat Christopher to the punch. <laughs> Man, I'm realizing right now I spend a lot of time on these streams talking about how I'm the things that I'm not good at or not qualified to do or talk about. <laughs> um, dang, I that suck. He says yes, it Cor is a corbel. So. I knew that. See, I knew that. Totally, totally had that one. All right, so I'm gonna get a little, a little, a little fancy with this one. Uh, what will we do without Christopher? <laughs> you just appear stupid, obviously. <laughs> it's a good thing you're here, my friend. All right. I'm going to throw a couple of details onto here. Uh, just a little, little. Well, something, something extra there. Cool. And now I'm going to grab this, turn off this, and whoops. All right. Group deselect. All right. And I'm going to take that. I'm going to make that into a component case. I want to come back and add more detail later. And I'm going to set my axes right up here. And I'm going to call that <laughs> Corbel. I believe that's it. <laughs> and if I'm not, close enough. That. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pirates can't spell. Exactly. Don't go to, pirates don't go to school. Go there and <laughs> say divide that by three. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it right here at. Do I still have it? I do have it. I'm actually snap it out here onto why am I being weird? Oh, because I got glue two turned on. Alright. I'm gonna snap it out here in the middle of nowhere. And uh, with move turned on, let's go ahead and rotate that 90 degrees. Move one. Oh I didn't actually okay, gotta grab one of these. Slide to here. 
So these ones actually hang out a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one and say make unique. I'm going to use scale to just kind of pull this out. It doesn't go all the way to the edge, but maybe just make it a little bit longer, something like that. And now I'll take uh, that. And I'll stick it not quite at center, something like that. And then say divide by six. No, that's ridiculous. Five looks good. Oh, that's a good looking galley. That is. Awesome. Cool. Um, all right, so this galley needs windows, and I'm just going to do a full, just like just a big strip. I want some sun in my galley. I want some light. So I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to option copy that down once, and then again. You're missing one thing, Aaron. Bring it. An eye patch. Arr. <laughs> That's what Mark's for. Mark had the eye patch on. <laughs> he'll, he'll be back in a moment. It that was, was more of the wheel of pain, not this one, right? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> do you guys all catch that? What, what did everybody think? Did anybody, anybody here uh, visit us when we did the wheel of pain? Uh, those of you who didn't and don't know what we're talking about, uh, we did a live session just recently. Uh, Mr. Josh Riley and myself did a little head-to-head -head modeling, some uh, SketchUp shootout for those of you who wear what that is. And uh, we took it to another level, and we did something called the Wheel of Pain, which was a, it was a wheel. You spun, like the uh, Wheel of Fortune kind of thing. You spun it, and when it stopped, you were met with a challenge. Something along the lines of maybe modeling with only your left hand, or modeling without your mouse, or something like that. Um, First mate saw it. All right, what'd you think? That everyone's Positive? saying it's funny, and Anna, Anna G. Wait, funny? We were going for educational. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one may have been full-on entertainment. There, <laughs> there's probably not a whole lot of uh, lessons learned on that one, but... Well, Norm, good. Glad Norm to hear. Norm wants to know what extension you're using to mirror your objects. Uh, nothing. Right now, I'm just using components. Nice. So... Yeah. All right, so I might come back in here and put additional detail into these windows, but right now I just have the place where the windows go. I'm thinking of levels of detail because here's the thing. We love that you guys hang out with us as long as you do. I mean, the fact that we get you for, I mean, we have people watching the stream for the full three to four hours, which is so cool. Um, but I do have to be cautious to make sure, I do wanna make something that what's, when it's done, it looks cool and we can actually put it somewhere or use it for something. Um, so I have to like temper myself where I would like to go in and start drawing details in the windows. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start with just this basic geometry right here and then we'll come back and maybe add additional geometry, additional details as we have time. So I'm gonna throw in my, are they called portholes? I wanna call them portholes. Um, but I think there's actually a difference between a porthole in a normal ship and the thing that a cannon pops out of and shoots. <laughs> but they're all running together as a round hole in the side of a boat for me. Ship. Don't that use the term boat. Accurate. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to draw a thing that I'm going to call a porthole. But I would like you to let me know if I'm incorrect. So first night. Dave wants to know if you're going to model the captain's seat. It's right here, Dave. I'm sitting in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's live. I'll put a. I'll throw a uh, a big old timey wheel up there where the captain could stand. There you go. Gunport, Christopher said. Ah. So it shall be called. Thank you, Christopher. Wait, what's a porthole then? Um. See, Dave's saying they should be square, which I think is correct because. They kind of closed up, right? They had like flap things that get pulled open. Um, but think, yeah, I think so. But you know what? Guess what? This is where I'm going to do a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it may not, accuracy may not buy into this. <laughs> may not play into this. All right. I'm going to come in here with a circle. I'm going to bump my edges back up to 24 because I want, this is going to be a little bit bigger than the last thing I put in. I'm going to do something like this. 
to offset this. Hey, Dave, how's it going, by the way? I didn't say hi. It's good to see you. Um, hopefully, you still have the forum open on another window so you can keep helping people while you hang out with us. I hate to think that I'm, I'm taking you away from that. Okay. Those of you who don't know, Dave Richards is a, well, I will just call him a madman when it comes to helping people on the forum. He does nice. an amazing job. Um, and uh, yeah, he answers stuff quicker than it's typed. I think sometimes he actually posts answers before the questions go up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a porthole is a window, whereas the gun port is what guns come out of. Okay, well, Interesting. be that as it may, I want round windows on my pirate ship. <laughs> so that's what I'm creating. Um, artistic choice, right? That's right. My artistic license. All right, so I'm going to create, here's what I'm making right now. I'm making something that actually is going to pass all the way through the wall of the ship because um, I'm going to let this actually do the cutting. This is going to come through and uh, cut into the ship. And where'd that go to? That's too far out. Also glad you guys know some things about uh, ships because, like I said, I know nothing. <laughs> um, so that looks kind of cool. I want. I need. I need more though. I need some details on here. I'm gonna do something that has absolutely no historical bearing or reference that I know of, um, but I think it could look cool. Oh, here I got to draw a line. I'm going to draw some geometry to add to these, uh, what probably are portholes. Oh, Dave tricked me. He was actually asking about the bathroom for the captain, <laughs> the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> They call, they, do they not call that the throne on the seas? <laughs> Oops, got, got a little delete happy. Jake says he usually uses the K shortcut to see the keyframe when he wants to pull in an invisible aspect of the model. The K, oh, back edges? Is that what? Uh, I think so. I'll just carry these all the way through like that. All right, and now I'm going to grab this uh, geometry why did that not break what did i do i did something mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm gonna need to break this too though all right and i'm gonna take these pieces, including this, and I'm going to go from here, option, straight up to the top, times three, just give me one of those on each side. That's a cool little detail. I like that. It has, like I said, there's nothing about it that, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just a cool looking thing. Uh, <laughs> All right, there we go. And actually, I want to fill this in at this point because I want that to be solid. Get rid of some extra geometry so I don't have to clean it up later. Um, so I'm doing this. Um, some people might ask, why did I not make a cutting component out of it or a... Uh, 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 glue to component. The issue I'm going to run into, and I already know this now, is that when I get out here, as I bring some, bring this along in a line and evenly space them, it's going to pretty quickly run into broken geometry. So this, this guy right here, if I made him flat, once I get to like right here, it's placing on this broken geometry, I'd have to go through and fudge it to get it to line up. 
So instead, I create a component that I know I'm going to have to go back and individually cut into the face depending on where it is. So that was by design, um, not an oversight. I do those, but I didn't do it that time. Um, all right. So the other thing I want to do is I'm going to create a flat plane. There we go. And I'm going to Oops. Ooh, 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 ooh. Rookie mistake. All right, I'm going to make that into a group. And I'm making it a group instead of a component, and that's intentional because I don't want these to repeat. I want to put that geometry in, but like I said, because it's going to intersect a little bit different each time when I cut it, I actually want each of those to be individual. I don't want them to repeat themselves. I don't want to have to go through the process of making each one unique before I intersect it. All right, so now I'm going to come back in here as I was trying to do before, I'm going to create a plane. This is just a plane that I'm going to get a reference line out of. And, ah, wrong button. And we got a couple of tips from Anna. All right, let's go. She said, maybe you could think first how many levels inside it will have. So from the outside, you can imagine a proper height of each level. And then that way the window will be either low or high from the hypothetical floor. That is an excellent thought. And, and let me actually see something. If I bring this across and I bring this in, it's below the floor. So ah. I think. Yeah. So that goes inside below the just now it's still always below the floor. That's a good point. That is an excellent thing to think about. And having thought about that, I'm going to drop this just slightly. And I'm going to take this piece right here, intersect with model, and really all I want out of this thing is this line right here. And I'm gonna take this, do a little more work on here because I'm gonna come in and get myself some guidelines inside the group. I'm going to take this and there's a method to this madness. <laughs> now that I know Dave's watching, I'm all nervous and confused too. That's You're making him nervous, Dave. <sighs> Come on, Dave. <laughs> Somebody right. wanted, wants to know if the selection changed from color and looks. Hmm? I don't know what that means. Maybe. It might have. Um, um, just a, something that is coming up. Um, I will say that did the selection change from color? STK Phoenix? I don't know. If you explain sure. your question or reword your question, maybe we can help you with that. Um, using arrow keys is better than shift key. I agree. I do use it a lot. Um, but I end up using the shift key a lot just because where my hands end up. So on my 3d mouse at the far right, the shift key is a pinky push versus the, uh, arrow key toggles are on the right side of my mouse. So I have to take my hand off the puck to move over. Same on the keyboard. Um, you know, so my hands are like this. Over here, I can just hold down shift as I'm still moving my mouse. If I want to hit the arrow keys, I got to cross over to hit the arrow keys over here. So I end up doing it a lot just out of habit more than anything else. Um, so, but yeah, that's, I agree. I, I do like arrow keys. I think they're great. Um, and I'm going to, so I copied this one over and I'm going to say divide that by five maybe. 
Yes, I'm 100% happy with that. I like that. Now, what I'm going to do to get these lined up on the side, like I said, because we're dealing with a compound curve here, is one at a time. And I'm aware these are on the outside. They're not connected on the other side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover that in just a second. So this first one is still hitting the line. See both ends? Oh, almost. It's a little off there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this piece right here. I'm going to go to orbit. Or I'm sorry. Whoa, where'd that come from? Rotate. I'm going to grab it by the one with locked to the vertical axes. Click on the one where it's connected. And I'm going to grab this point right here and bring it back to the line. Next one, same thing. So work my way down lines. Move it, grab the first side, bring it back. I want to stay on the green axes. Bring it back. Click right there. Orbit. Or, or <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Whew>. Rotate. <laughs> <laughs> Would copy along path work? Um, yeah, that may actually work. Um, I don't know that copy long path would rotate them though. Um, I could, because I, I believe, and Dave might be able to back me up on, or might be able to help me out on this. I think copy along path would take it from its placement point. Components along path would grab it and evenly space it along, but they would all be facing the same way. So I'd still have to go back and rotate them. I don't think that it will follow the curve. I think it just places them. Ah, okay. Um, does anybody else believe that? That sound, that sound correct? What do you I'm, think, Dave? I'm going to use rotate now. Nailed it. Not orbit, because that is a totally different command. Not a modify command. All right, and one more time. I'm going to bring this one straight back on the green axes. Rotate. And then bring that in line uh, there. So you can see... Those actually then move along the path that way. So what I didn't do, I didn't actually want to tilt them down that way. They should be vertical, so um, they're a little more of them stick out on the bottom than the sides, than the, the front. All right. Now, get rid of this. Um, so this still isn't part of uh, the group. It's still not part of the, the, uh, the ship itself. And it's also only on one side. It's not part of the component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I want to take these pieces, these six pieces, and copy them so I can put them over on the other side. But to do that, the first thing I'm going to need is some kind of a reference point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line coming off here, and then I'm going to grab that line plus my six portholes. And I'm going to make them into a group. And I'm going to copy them over here, the other side of the ship. I'm going to right click and flip along the green axes. Something else I have finally learned to do, thanks to you all. Speaking of which, I'm going to save. I'm going to grab it by that point I created. I'm going to drop it right here. And there we go. So now I have that same geometry on both sides. Um, I can explode that then. And actually, you know what? I'm not going to explode that. Yeah, I'm not going to copy it over. That was a cool tip. That was pretty neat the way that worked out. But I want to actually merge this with the geometry. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is take this whole group, Control X, double click to enter this group, and then paste in place. And that puts it into the group, which, or the component, which of course puts it on both sides. So now what I can do is I can actually, I'll explode this group and then I'll grab these. This is the way, there's a couple ways I could think to do this. Um, my method would be to grab one at a time, explode them, grab the side of the ship, right click, intersect faces with selection, and then that'll give me all that geometry tied together nice and tidy. I will have to, once I'm done, come in here and get rid of this extra geometry on the inside, but that's not too big of a, 
that's not too painful. So again, right click, explode. When you explode geometry, it automatically selects it. So it's already highlighted every time you explode. So all I have to do is grab the back piece and then intersect faces with selection. And I can just work my way down here one after another. Boom and boom. <laughs> this is one of those spots in a video that was maybe produced a little bit. You'd hear some music and the speed model would happen. <laughs> we don't have that. So darn. We have a lot of tips coming in for you, Aaron. I will take them. We got plug in tips, we have drinking game tips. Um, <laughs> YouTube says always save. Control S. See? Yeah, that's that's YouTube's job here is uh, <laughs> keep me from doing something too stupid. Someone on Twitch is saying array along path plugin rotates component along curves. And that oh, they cool. use it for railings. Nice. Okay. So that's a good tip. That is great. And let's see here. Lots of tips on Facebook. Uh, Jake is saying that the other half of the boat if it was a component, you could copy paste it in place. Mm -hmm. Vlad is thinking copy along would detect any curves on the model and rotate them automatically. Okay, that's cool. I, I was not sure. That's I appreciate you guys filling me in on that because that was not it's not something I've used very often. Very cool. YouTube is asking if you could do a group intersect. Um, I could have done all that geometry at once. I could have exploded it all. And actually now I'm thinking about it because this would be so easy to select like this um, because there's nothing beyond it in the component. I could have exploded them all and done that all at once. Ah. Yeah. This is, this is on the fly modeling. This is the kind of thing that, uh, yeah. So in here, so there's a couple ways to do this. One of the concerns I run into right now is coming in and doing this to get rid of this geometry is going to take some weeding to get the right pieces there. I want to delete extra. So what I can do is if I double click right here, it selects the surface and all the edges connected. So if I delete that, when the edges go away, um, I'm left with just those lines. And now I could actually come through here and delete just these surfaces and now is going to call for an extension that I'm just realizing I don't think I installed, which is clean up. Nope. So <laughs> my recommendation then would be to run clean up to get rid of extra lines. And that would just come in here and in one fell swoop, get rid of all those lines. Um, because I don't have it installed, um, I can come, if I just view it from just the right angle, I should be able to drag my eraser along and get rid of these lines. This may not be the, uh, this is probably not the tightest workflow possible, but um, I'm going to do this rather than have you guys watch me install an extension <laughs> again. We did that once. We did a <laughs> unintentional hour plus of uh, installing and trying extensions. Oh, wow. Once is good. I'm good. Yep. All right. And there is our first half of the ship. Wait, I missed one. All right, so there we go. Control S. Um, that's the beginning of our pirate ship. Um, nice. We're just about two hours in, so I'm gonna save and we're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna bring back Mark. Hey, Mark, come here. <laughs> Where's gonna, Pirate Mark? I'm going to put him up. That's right. He's here's our cap, cap and Mark. This may not be to scale. All right. <laughs> there's there's our, our Cap and Mark, and he's going to hold this down for us while I step away for a quick break. Um, all right, so we'll get back at it. Real quick before that, no, I'll talk about after the break. had a couple of things to, to shout out if you guys haven't been here. No, I'm going to do it before we leave. Somebody asked, so I'm going to bring this back up how Iron Man went from last time. This is where we're at with the print. So this was uh, that first piece that we went through was the mask part and we uh, thickened it to an eighth inch, printed it, 
and I've been doing a little bit of sanding, a little bit of cleanup. You can see there's quite a bit to go. Um, still got that, those uh, tessellated, I don't know, quadded face, head that I got to smooth out. But that was pretty cool. That turned out pretty cool so far. The other thing I wanted to shout out again, I wanted to point out again, is uh, this right here. Best bus ever. We've had two entries. So I know there's more than two of you watching. I literally know that. We can see the numbers of people watching. <laughs> so that's not, that's not like, I know you're out there. I really know you're out there. So if you guys get a chance, go download our school bus and turn it into the best bus offer. <sighs> Aaron needs a break. Well, yeah, it's break time. <laughs> Go download the school bus. Make it the best bus ever. It's the name of the competition. I should really get that one right. Download it, paint it, add a spoiler to the back, whatever you think it needs to be the coolest bus you've ever seen. And you might win some awesome SketchUp swag. Um, we'll print it out and hang it up in our office. Lots of cool opportunities here to, to get your work shown and, and see it. Next week, again, when we come back in here, first thing I'm going to do, just like this week, is pull this up, look at 3D Warehouse, Search for that hashtag best bus ever and show what do we got, who's, who's entered. So I'm hoping by next week, you guys got a full week to uh, make an awesome bus and get it uploaded. And we'll take a look at it uh, when we go live again next week. So with that, uh, I'll leave you in Captain Mark's capable hands. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll get back at it in about 10 minutes. So I'll see you in a few. Thank you.
Oh, here goes Dave. Arr. What is a pirate's favorite letter? <laughs> Isn't it R? It is. All right, guys. I appreciate that. You guys giving me a couple of minutes. Um, we are just going to hop right back in here and keep, keep on, uh, keep pirating it up. All right. I'll turn Mark off. It's mass time. So we're going to get masty. Um, actually, before we do that, we got to join this together. So I got to see, is there anything else we want to put on here before we start joining geometry? Whew, this is dangerous. This is a dangerous time right here. Um, what I often will do is, I know it makes my model bigger, but I'll throw a copy off to the side just in case I forget something or have to come back. Um, mm -hmm. I do, yes, I will stick an anchor on, but that's another one side thing. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to put on both sides. I want to throw a door on here real quick because I do want to have two, two doors. I'm not even in the component. Let's try that again. Like, I'm going to go like that, and then I'm actually going to... An anchor and a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I had to draw a bird, I downloaded it from 3D Warehouse. <laughs> it did work. All right. Let me push that in a little bit. Uh, maybe grab this arc, offset it like that, I'm going to grab that, yeah, I'm kind of feeling like most of my, uh, Architectural details on here maybe came from Yellow Submarine or something like that. <laughs> but I'm uh, all right with that. All right. So that's what I'm going to do for right now. Lots of opportunity to go in and add additional details. But, uh, you know, all right. So WRA Design just called out uh, making a uh, pirate flag with cloth works. I totally thought that. Clothworks is something that I played with back in the beta, and I never went back and grabbed a copy of it and, and used it again. And, and I'm so bummed because I'm like, oh, that would have been perfect. I wanted to actually make like an animating or, or something. And I just, oh, I failed you. I apologize. <laughs> but yes, Clothworks. If you guys haven't seen Clothworks and you do any kind of cloth, cloth um, check it out. It's, uh, it's related to the MS physics engine, I think. I can't remember exactly how that works, but yeah, it does some super cool stuff. You got to check it out. Uh, maybe I got to put that on my list of things to show in a future stream because that is like one of those kind of uh, extensions. All right. Um, so I'm going to, before I start exploding this thing out, I'm going to... Uh, get some of this other geometry joined in. So I have this piece right here. I have these guys right here. I'm just going to start exploding and merging. I'm going to grab this one and explode it. Whoops, Control-Z. I'm going to take these, and I'm going to make them unique first because they are separate instances than the one I'm maintaining as a backup. So as I come in here and I start ma changing stuff, uh, I don't want that the copy I made over there to uh, get changed. Because I selected both copies at the same time when I hit Make Unique, they're a new copy of, of it, the same instance. So these two halves are the same, and these two halves are the same. And that's because I copied both of them at once. So if you have a string of components and half of them are different, if you select that half all at once, right-click, Make Unique, those will be a new set of the same component. So when I come in here and explode my railing, whoops, first I gotta be able to click on it, explode my railing, it explodes on both halves because that's what I have selected. All right, while that's selected, well actually this, do I have to merge this? 
actually pretty well connected on this one. So I guess this line right here tied together so I could clean that up. Oh, not that one because that's where it starts to, I'd have to option erase if I wanted that one gone. All right, now I'm going to leave it. I like the way it looks. All right, so that's joined in. Um, I'm going to grab all of these ones right here. And all of these. I'm going to explode those. And then down here, I'm going to explode and then immediately grab this piece right here. And then while I'm here, I'll merge all this. I'll do this part two. There we go. Grab all that stuff, right click, intersect faces with selection. That should give me some nice, clean, intersected lines. So there is, because of the way I'm doing this, I do have a bunch of geometry on the inside right now. So if I come peek inside, um, it, it's not horrible. It's not a big mess in here, but so these extra lines in here, um, I have an extra line here all the way. Whoops, let's do this. Select the actual surfaces and delete them rather than the edges. That's going to be a lot easier to clean up. Um, so I do have some extra geometry in here that I could come through and clean up. I'm not going to stress about it right now um, because it's so boring to watch somebody else clean. Oops. I forgot to intersect this with the deck. <laughs> I don't know why I whispered that. Shh, don't tell nobody. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, that made a mess. Control-Z, 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 Control-Z. <laughs> Thank goodness for Control-Z. That's my favorite command. All right, select these. Intersect faces with selection. There we go. Now I should be able to come in here and delete this geometry like it's not a big deal because it's not question mark <sighs> so i'm still not right there hmm now i'm just curious why that happened i mean i'm not above believing that i did that to myself Oh, there's something. Oh, here we go. Something weird going on with this handrail. Ooh, there's a gap. Huh, and that's going to be the whole way along, too. Okay, so that's something for uh, off-air me to consider fixing. Where did that happen? Oh, no. This was all flat, right? I thought so. Where did that happen? Nope something my inside and outside something wasn't lined up here all right so that is something that i would probably uh, i will go back and fix that before i post this to the warehouse because that's a bummer that shouldn't be that way but i'm not gonna do some do stitching and micro lofting <laughs> that's a term i made up myself <laughs> right now so the important part is if i triple click right now oh my balustrade Here's another uh, selection toys shortcut. If I right click on one selected item and here it instances and say select all, you'll pick all of them where I can right click and say explode. All right, now if I triple click, everything should light up. Looking good. All right, sweet. Um, so now I can come out. I'm going to grab this one side. I'm going to grab both sides. I'm going to save. And I'm going to explode. There we go. Now, one of the things I could do is, because this is all joined together now, I should be able to come all the way down the middle and delete these extra lines to join it all together. Um, again, that's kind of a boring cleanup process. Um, you know, maybe if I could sing or something like that, it would be more fun and like sing as I erase or 
<laughs> singing and stitching or something like that, but I'm not going to do that to anybody here. There was a good pirate song that someone was singing earlier. Yeah, see, a good, a good chanty. Exactly. <laughs> Woo! That was fun. Um, so I might not go too far with this cleanup. There's a couple pieces that I'm actually, I want to leave intentionally. And that is specifically, actually, this isn't too bad. This is not bad. I've done some things where I joined two components together and they were just a mess. Uh, one of the things that could be done, somebody may actually already be saying this in the comments, I could triple click and soften and smooth to get rid of, ooh, something's, a little gap there. Oh, there we go. I don't know what I did. Um, I could use soften and smooth to uh, join all this together. This might have to be hidden. Nope, looks good. This one probably has to be hidden. Nope, looks good. Um, soften, and <laughs> soften and smooth might some be something I want to use to uh, clean this up, but that just hides geometry, and I'm a big fan of having nice, clean models with only the necessary geometry in there, so... I'm just going to spend a few seconds, a few more seconds, cleaning this up. All right, that's as far as I'm going to go. I am intentionally leaving the lines on the deck because they're going to help me find the centers because that's where I want to make sure I put my masts. My masts are going to go right in the middle of the deck. So I'm going to do that now. We're going to put the biggest mass is going to go right about here. I'm going to go to circle. This I'm going to leave at 24. It's be a higher, higher polygon circle. I'm going to do up here-ish. I'm going to do a smaller one. And then in the back, I'm going to do one that size. And then when I get that done, now I'm going to come in here and delete these lines out. I don't want to keep the lines in there because if I come to push-pull, I'm going to have two separate halves right now. And in fact, if I just delete the outside lines, I do that. I'm going to have a break in my circle. So I'm going to get rid of all these lines before I push-pull anything at all. There we, go. we have a question from uh, YouTube. Would vertex tools be able to select the seam line between the mirrored components? Um, depending on how well my geometry is put together, yes, that may work. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, vertex tools works by creeping along an ordered mesh. So as long as everything is properly quadded, it's all made up of squares or triangulated squares, then it could, I could say select loop and it would go find it all the way around. Ah, okay. If at any point my geometry isn't connected correctly, then it might lose it. So it would be worth trying for sure. Um, I do like vertex tools. One of my favorite parts of vertex tools, I don't know if you guys use vertex tools at all, but one of the parts I like the best and I use all the time is make planar. I'll use that in non-organic, non-vertex tool <laughs> sort of workflows all the time. All right, so I got some masts. Well, what I want to do now is I'm going to, actually this main mast should probably go a little even higher. And I want these to taper as they go up. So I'm going to select this and hit scale. I'm going to grab a corner and I'm going to hold down option. Option scales uniformly from a corner around the center. I'm going to bring that to a smaller point. Same thing here. Scale, option, whoop, option, go. Scale, option. All right. We got masts. Woohoo! Right. I'm going to create a layer over here. I'm going to call this layer back up. Whoa, apparently I'm yelling, back up. <laughs> back up. All right, and on backup, I'm going to put these pieces that I used as a backup. What's happening right there? Change those to... I didn't scroll up enough. Back up. And then I can turn back up off. All right. Those are some big, healthy looking masts. Um, I'm going to hop over to my reference material again. Because I have. 
All right, so it looks like a lot of these have three sales. Um, cool. One, two, three. So that means I have to put some, some bars across here. One, two, three, four of them will have to go across. And it looks like they start small, get bigger, get biggest here, then maybe come back in towards the bottom. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to do just that. I'm, I need some reference geometry. So I'm going to throw a line up the front of this mast. You know what I should have done is I should have actually just made this one and then copied, but I think there are fewer, there are actually fewer sales on this one. All right, and I'm gonna come in here. Let's see, I'm gonna go find the center. Where's the center? And I'm gonna I'm gonna draw some lines, just to kind of feel this out, figure out where all these pieces go. Give me that. Give me the middle point. Where are you with me? All right, there we go. One, two, three sails. Yeah, I buy that. All right, I'm gonna take it right now. And nice. Uh, let's take it right here. I'm gonna invert it. I know I use scale instead of flip along, but old dog, new trick. I did the did the new trick a couple times. I like the old stuff now. Everyone's saying leave room for the crow's nest. Yeah, I figured somebody would call that one out. <laughs> <laughs> How crazy is a crow's nest? Can you imagine that? Right. Like, and I was, I, I read a thing like, you know, you see in movies and stuff that it's kind of like this, looks like a barrel or something like that. <laughs> and I have been on like a tall, tall ship one time. I think it was in Chicago. So it was, you know, real authentic. <laughs> Uh, where they used to sail a whole lot um, off of Navy Pier. But they're talking about that, and they said, well, a lot of times they didn't have an actual crow's nest. It was more like just like, you know, a bar. What? So <laughs> somebody would crawl up there, and they'd just hold on and stand on the bar and, like, look for stuff. And <laughs> that's that's nuts. That is. All right, so I'm, we'll make a crow's nest right now because it is obviously quite important. So I'm going to just uh, do a quick offset right here. I'll pull that up a touch. Official design term, a touch. <laughs> oh, and actually, I'm going to leave that the way it is. Offset this a little bit. Yeah, exactly. That's my point, YouTube, is that yeah. <laughs> Chicago is on, <laughs> Chicago's a, lake. on a lake. It looks like an ocean, though, right? It is a, it's a big body of water. I will give credit where credit's due. It's, there's, you can't see the other side of it. It's, it is a big lake. It is. Um, it's pretty. But yeah, it's not exactly. People don't talk about you know the the <laughs> voyage ship. across Lake Superior. <laughs> a pirate ship on Lake That's Superior. Right. <laughs> the Great Lakes Pirates. <laughs> this scourge of the Second City. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do something like this because I'm gonna make that smaller. I'm trying to keep this all centered around the middle too. Because this is the uh, the mast from which our pirate flag shall fly, and I'm going to give this a little bit of a, a little bit of a taper. I'm going to grab this by the middle again. That looks like crow's nest, right? Everybody happy? Everybody good? That looks good to me. Like Michigan? Yes, I said Superior, Michigan. Oh, oh. Thank you, Dave. Dave keeps us honest. It's no kidding. Thank you. It's a good thing you're here. <laughs> and you're from Chicago, Eric? I am. My family is <laughs> is from Chicago. <laughs> Suburbs. We didn't have we didn't have big lakes there. There's there's no ships on the lakes that I grew up near. Because they were technically large ponds, I think, but <laughs> called everything a lake out there. All right. 
I'm gonna come on here and I'm gonna draw a circle. I'm gonna grab that circle then and I'm gonna move it out on the edge. I don't want this geometry to run through this geometry so I'm gonna put it out here. This is a test right now to see how big this uh, piece of wood has to be. I need to be a little bigger. I'll make this a little bit larger. I should actually be doing, I'm going to do this the right way. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Uh, I'm going to select this and I'm going to make it into a group intentionally group, not component, because I'm going to take it then option copy to each of these pieces. Everyone's saying that piece of wood is a yard. I buy that. A right. Yard arm, YouTube said. Sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. I believe you. I 100%. <laughs> that sounds correct. That sounds like <laughs> it's a yard. All right. I'm going to take these two lines right here. And then I'm going to use follow me. Because again, follow me will let me go right click, edit group, copy that geometry. And actually, I could copy this down and just uh, scale it. That would probably have been the quicker way to do it. Um. Carlos uh, has a good question. Which All command right. for choose center of circles? Which command do you use? Um, I just use inferencing. And as long as it is a circle, it will find it when you hover over an edge. If it's an exploded arc... Uh, it's not going to find the center anymore. So whatever command you're in, anything that uses inferencing, uh, you'll be able to do that. So just anytime you have a circle, so we have one right here. So if I come in here to draw a line, if I hover over the edge just for a second near a point, they won't work on an edge, I, I said that incorrectly, a point along the outside, um, I'll get that end point and then I can just move in and grab it again. All right. One more yard arm to go. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave's saying you got to break out the rum now that the sun is over the yard arm. Yar. We're speaking in pirate terms now, or <laughs> what? What is happening? <laughs> all right, so I've lined all that up. Um, Now, what I have to do, all right, I'm going to do something else now. I'm going to grab these lines that I created, and I'm going to throw them in their own group because I want to move where they're at from the back face here to the underside. So again, like we were talking about liberating geometry, if you group it, it will non-destructively remove that geometry from something else. Whereas before I was actually connecting with the middle of this piece. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, create some sails and I wanna create these in a separate group. That's, that's the other reason I did this. If I can get into it, come on, man. Give me the line. Give me the line. Fine. Hide you. Uh, edit group. And then I can go unhide all. Um, that's a context. That's not going to work. All right. So what I'm going to do is actually, I want to, I do want to do that. I want to hide all my yard arms. Like I just say that like, you know, <laughs> so yard natural arms. Now. Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to go into this right here. 
what I want to do is I'm going to do it first on this, this one up here. So I'm going to come from here to here and from here to here. It's going to give me a surface. Um, I'm going to start by drawing an arc. This is one of those things where I'm talking right now, like I know what I'm doing, but I'm totally winging this because I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this. Um, just being honest. <laughs> I'm going to go to the middle here. I'm going to draw a line out on the red axes. I'm going to take that back to here. And then I'm going to draw a couple of arcs Oops. from here to here. Pull it out to that. All right, and with that, I have created what I think will be, oh, hold up, I gotta angle this out. It's gonna come up just past that. I've created what I think will be the outline of my sail. Um, there is a couple ways to do this. So last week we spent a ton of time lofting and my impulse was to do lofting, but I came back and we're gonna actually use soap, skin and bubble for this. And I will show you exactly why once I clean up my lines. I'm gonna weld these together. All right, so now I should have one, nope, weld these together. One, two, oh, you argue with me? Weld those together. Ooh, I must have had some weird geometry in there. Oh, there's a little tiny edge in there. This doesn't work. How do I get that? Who's paying attention to what I'm doing? <laughs> oh, no, no, I lost it. Lost the middle. All right. Give it to me again. All right, there it is. Oh, was it up here? What's going on? Dave said, good idea, so he's on board with whatever <laughs> you're doing. <laughs> uh, cool. <laughs> uh, YouTube says you need a weld shortcut. I do. You're, you're absolutely right. I should totally be having a shortcut here. Oh, it worked. It kind of, screw it. There are two pieces. All right, I'm not going to, I'm not going to troubleshoot that anymore. I'm going to grab my lines here. I'm going to go turn on, where is it? Soap bubble. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta find out, it's on my other monitor. Got a primary, secondary thing going on. All right, I'm gonna skin that. Um, I want some more divisions in that, so let's double that, see what 20 looks like. We're gonna, we're gonna get crazy, we're gonna, I'm gonna go to, oops, to 15. 25. Whoa, no, two, that's too many. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter, let it do its cool stitchy thing. All right, so what it's gonna initially do, initially the geometry it creates is pretty similar to what a lofting, uh, which I think is what it is, it's just a loft. Uh, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna select it, and now I'm gonna do the bubble part. And I'm gonna put a pressure on here. Um, I usually start low to see what happens. So let's, uh, let's put 10 on there. Okay. So it's pulling backwards. So it's negative 10. See how that pushes out. A light breeze. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, look at it. Look at it go. It's kind of cool. So what happens if we put, uh, well, what if we'd had twice as much wind? 20. Ooh. Oh, minus 20, minus 20. 
see how that pushes out. Ooh. That looks nice. That's fun. Yeah, buddy. That's we're going with. We got twenty pounds of pressure in the sails. That's that's what we're doing. That looks cool. That looks cool. All right, I'm gonna keep that, and I'm gonna come into this now. Uh, get rid of this extra line. I'm not sure why this is here. Something stitched some geometry together. So you will see. I'll smooth this out. But this is one of the reasons I don't use soap bubble and skin uh, more often. Is it's not the most beautiful of meshes. It's not bad. It's absolutely not bad. But if uh, because just because of my workflow, I end up going back and intersecting with meshes and breaking meshes an awful lot. And uh, this unordered mesh, um, wrong button. This unordered mesh right here, where it starts breaking into multiple pieces, uh, can cause issues when I start intersecting geometry, that kind of stuff. But what uh, none of the other lofting tools can do, which is why I use this, is put that pressure on and get that nice, cool looking, it's just, it's awesome. So I'm gonna take that right now, I'm gonna soften and smooth that. Um, a little more. Nope, I'm gonna have to go clean whatever's going up on that corner. Just clean that myself. It is billowy. Oh, save. <laughs> Gosh, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take that. I'm also going to reverse that. There we go. And something weird's going on here. Disconnected. <laughs> oh, but we can fix it. I'm just going to delete it all and then reconnect. Oh, there's two endpoints there. Some, some got silly. That looks better. Reverse face. And there. All right. So that looks pretty good. Um, move this out here for just a second because I'm going to get rid of these lines right here. And then I can bring this back. All right, so inkling right now may be to do that all over again down here. What I'm thinking instead is taking this guy right here, copying him vertically at first. So I'm going to go straight down. I know it doesn't line up straight, so I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to scoot it forward on red till I hit that line. Whoops, I went, no, wrong one. I want to come up here. There we go. And then bring that forward. So I hit this line. Did I go too high? I did go too high. Cool. Like that. Nice. And now I can use my just straight up normal old scale. Say so snap that up to this bar and then We'll go right here and we'll pull it out from the center again, option, and just hover over that line. Much quicker, easier, and then I'll do that one more time. Grab by that corner, option, vertical, bring it down to this corner right here. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm gonna have more moving to do in just a second. I'm, I realize this, but get these in initial placement at the Almost proper size. Scale to bring that down to here and then around the middle with option to there. All right. So there's my tall sails. I can come in here and delete my extra lines. I don't need these anymore. 
because I'm going to come out now. Oops, I only deleted half of them. They're broken by the mast. And looks good. Let's get Yard Army. Edit, unhide all. Give us those back. And now that I've done that, I mean, with the lines, it looked like it was going to be okay. I did this, and it's looking awful squished towards the top. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first thing I'm going to do is come in here and grab this one. I'm going to do, I'm gonna have to do this to all of them. But you can see that that line, our reference line, was under the bottom of the yard, yard arm. So I'm going to have to come in here and scale real quick just grab this bottom piece and bring it up to the top. And I know that feels like nitpicking a little bit, but uh, I don't like geometry, lapping through geometry unless it's supposed to. Something like that. Cool, that looks all right. But I really think I wanna take these two pieces and move them vertically, uh, the other vertically, down like maybe that. Thomas says Fredo scale will help you. Yeah, I, again, the reason I'm not getting into Fredo scale more is because of, uh, I'm catching up. Fredo scale, the, the only reason I'm not doing more Fredo scale is because, like I said, this unordered mesh can get a little bit meshy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, it can get a little messy, but I do, I like Fredo scale, like a lot. Probably use it too much. Um, so I'm going to move that one down, and I can take my big sail, my main sail, Use scale then to pull the ends of that down. To here. And see, they don't quite line up anymore because I had to bring those down and then the yard arm had to come out to account for the, the mast changing. But fortunately, I can very easily use rotate snap to the green axes to just grab this point right here and swivel it out. That's pretty sweet. All right. I'm not going to do that again from scratch. <laughs> I'm going to save that, all of that. The reason I spent the time on that to do that, like make it look that way, is because it's going to be real easy now to just grab sections of these and put them on the other masts. I've already forgotten what my source material looks like, so I'm going to switch over real quick. Um, this looks like, well, it looks like we're all over the place. Do we want to go with Lego versus what I think is Playmobil versus reality? Where's Pirates of the Caribbean? I'm pretty sure that was historically accurate. That, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe we'll just go with... I want to put three sails on the front and then two on the back because, and that's why, because I do what I want. All right, I'm going to do move this by, I need a point of reference to move from. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my hidden geometry on because that way I can grab this middle piece right here. Option to copy this whole big array and then come down to this one, place that there. And I think what I could get away with, oh, what I wanna do <laughs> is I wanna just do scale and, oh, but you know what, I could, yes, I can still do that. Um, my yard arms are gonna be slightly smaller But I can do something like that. You guys didn't see that, but that was some uh, some finger ninjury on the keyboard key because I did 
We'll do it again. So I'm grabbing off this middle key and I want to scale about the middle because I don't want to have to recenter it afterwards. So I hold down option and start scaling. It starts doing this wacky stuff because I'm, I'm jumping to all these snap points. But if I hold down option or control on, on, on windows and the shift key at the same time, now it scales it uniformly around about the middle from the vertical uh, piece. So I'll go there and then I'm going to move it using this center line on the mast as a reference point from there up to almost the top. Cool. Nope, not cool. I'm like a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? Um, that makes sense. I get that. All right, let's try that again. I'm going to do an x-ray mode this time. So I'm going to go find, where's the middle point? There we go. Take that middle point. I'm going to throw that up against that. And these yard arms aren't connected to the mass. I don't know if you guys have seen this. They're connected by a whole bunch of ropes, which on ships is called rigging. Mm. It's a thing. That's a thing I know. It's a new term for me. All right. Well, there you go. Rigging. <laughs> okay. That's looking okay. Can't complain about that. And I'm going to grab just just a section of this. So I'm going to come in here. Actually, I'm going to have to move the whole thing and then clean it up. I'm going to go from the center of this mast to, oops, I did. I only grabbed, I got to get my yard arms. Oh, how embarrassing would that be? Show up without your yard arms. I'm going to grab that from the middle, option, swing straight back here. Go find the middle again, super sweet. And I'm just going to delete this bottom yard, yard arm. Come in here and delete this bottom sail. Looks a little dorky up there by itself like that. So I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna do the opposite of what I just did before. Scale this a little bit bigger, drop it vertically. And then move it out. That looks cool. Um, I just had that moment, that moment where I'm like, Ooh, that's cool. Um, I'm going to grab, I don't like where the center mast is. I want this back a little bit. And in order to move it back the same on with both pieces, I'm going to pick a even dimension. I'm going to say move it back eight feet. Enter. That way I can grab all of this and move it back eight feet. Well, that looks pretty cool. That looks nice. Aaron wants to know if there's an option for oh, putting points. Way. So you know where the center is if you're doing a mirror effect. Um, in SketchUp, we do have uh, something called guide points. Um, so you can actually create a guide point. Um, I end up not using them. I use a lot of inferencing where I don't have to create anything. Or I'll go in and draw a line temporarily and delete it later. <coughs> Excuse me. But it is possible. Yes, you could. Um, hold on. I heard something was wrong. <laughs> Andy's saying something's wrong with the length. It's too short. <laughs> pa uh, the tour vessel, the golden Hindi? That's right. I do have violent reactions to guides sometimes. <laughs> Nothing wrong. If you like guides, that's cool. I'm not going to argue with you. That's awesome. But I, uh, I tend to not use a lot of guides. Um, all right. I, I, I have a couple things I want to throw on here. Where are we at? Three o'clock. So 
we're getting we're getting we're getting there. Um, I want to do this. I don't know why this is a detail that I feel like I want to add, but I'm going to come in here. I want to put a circle here. Again, not really sure why I feel compelled to do this thing that I'm doing. Maybe, maybe there's something to be learned here and I, I feel like, ah, oh, dang. Obviously, there's not a good reason here because this is taking, all right, all right, all right, almost there, almost there. All right, just doing it again. Yeah, this is not worth it. What I'm doing is not worth the amount of work I just went through. Oh, hey. All right. Sometimes there we go. All right, so I feel like I want, oh man. I want a longer jaws poking stick at the front than this has. And I really, like I said, I don't know. This just feels like it has to happen. Um, I want to uniformly rescale this, but it's off axis. It's at a weird axis for some reason. So I'm going to go reset my axes to a way that makes a little more sense. Oops. So now I can grab this circle at the end, scale about the middle, smaller. And then I can also now grab this, oops, grab this, and go to uh, this. I'm going to come straight down and grab this piece, and I'm going to rotate it in line with this by just moving over the line. So what that did by grabbing the side of the circle there to the side of this piece here is it assures that, let's get rid of this x-ray, that this is the middle piece is lying in line there. Like I said, I don't know why, but I thought that that really should be good. Plus you see a lot of rigging going from like here down to here on pirate ships. And that, that looks like, that looks sweet. Um, I am going to, this is I think what I did to explode this and then intersect. Whew, those, those uh, sails are getting in my way. Selection, there we go. Nice clean lines. Nice. What's Dave, Dave says that's a bow sprit. I, you know, I was just about to call it a bow sprit too. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's keeping us honest. Again. I believe you, Dave. I had no idea what it was called, but it's a, it's, like I said, I don't know if you were here, but in Jaws, the Revenge, the fourth Jaws, some say the best Jaws ever. Nobody says that. It's a, <laughs> it's a bad movie. But uh, Chief Brody's wife, you know, spears Jaws through the explosive device on its side with the bowsprit of an old ship. Nice. So that reason alone, it's kind of essential piece of, <laughs> of nautical machinery. Um, Everyone wants cannons, Aaron. Oh, my gosh. I got portholes. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll, we'll imagine that there's uh, cannons in the portholes. I'll draw a cannon. Just a second. <laughs> First, I got to get... Uh, I got to get the captain's, wow, this is a big ship. Holy cow. Feels like about the size of a black pearl, doesn't it? Definitely. All right, so I just need you for reference here. Mark, um, I'm going to... draw a thing. Let's get this back here. Bring it up to here-ish. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, this is way too big. Fortunately, we know how to deal with that. didn't make it a group so they grab everything on the bottom good this is a tombstone apparently right, it does look this. like a tombstone <laughs> <laughs> that's not not by design all right let's do this About there. And once we got a awesome. Bring this out. And I'm gonna go offset a little bit. Pull it out some more. Pull this out beyond that. Too much. And then I'm gonna take this and offset it again cool oops all right I'm gonna push pull this back to there They did not actually call this the steering wheel, in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> I think it 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 uh, it does have a name, but that was before they invented steering. Actually, I was I was thinking about that. Lone Wolf uh, pointed out. Um, uh, that lines to cylinder, I was thinking lines to tubes, um, would be a tool that could be used for creating, uh, the rigging because obviously lines themselves don't really exist outside of SketchUp. They're just there for my reference. But uh, uh, there are extensions that will take lines and cre either uh, create geometry along them or uh, put that, uh, turn them into tubes, which is kind of cool. All right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate it. Dave says he has a ship's wheel that he could send you if you need it. Oh. <laughs> of course Dave has a ship's wheel, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know your ship's wheel is probably better than this Dave but <laughs> it's the principle of the thing so now it looks like a wagon wheel <laughs> but because I made this a component I can come in here right now do something like this push this up a little bit that on all edge almost and I'm just gonna do this super quick oh this is this gets rough when you start uh you guys have hit this before I'm sure you have where you start modeling a small detail in a big model <laughs> stuff gets a little bit uh jumpy there we go that's all I, oh boy so I got to stick to the 3D mouse, stop with the scrolling. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in here. Get 
get a handle on here. Get a handle on this. <laughs> and grab it. Might have been a little small there in the end. Yep. That's okay. Fortunately, we know how to fix that problem. And uh, we'll just erase that so no one will ever know. All right. Nope. It'll work for now. All right, Captain Mark has something to grab onto. Nice. And all right, we got to throw in an anchor. We had a couple of cannons on here. A parrot. Oh, come on with the bird. <laughs> all right. Um, what, what time we got? 17. All right, we got time for a little bit of this mess. So uh, all right, I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to think, all right, that's enough, thinking time. Oops. I'm going to draw a quick sub D anchor. Uh -huh. I'm going to draw, yep. Because I haven't subdivided anything for like a couple, it's been a while since I subdivided something on here, right? Everyone's liking the subdivide. All right. Good. Glad you guys approve. <laughs> um, and I'm just trying to block out shapes and be intentional about where I'm going to break this thing. Quads, quads, quads. That looks good. That looks good. It's got some good pirate jokes today. I like that. So, I've... Tommy, why do pirates like SketchUp, Aaron? I, I honestly don't know. Please help me. They tried it once and instantly got hooked. Yeah, we need more topics that have easy jokes. <laughs> I forgot. I, I was called out by a coworker who pointed out that I should have cautioned everyone that this week's stream would be rated R. <laughs> Not my own. Full credit to uh, Jody Gates for that one. Nice. Jody has some good jokes. He's a dad through and through. <laughs> All right, I'm going to throw a couple more lines on this side. Uh, I think that might be it. All right, I'm going to kill this stuff down the middle. Get rid of this. Oops, I got to get this, rid of this too. No internal faces. All right, and then I can... Probably could have done a little more shaping here, but uh, in that, like, I wouldn't have had to. No, it looks okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, so one of the things I can do now is I can actually grab some of these pieces that are going to come more to a point. 
No, I'm going to break this. Which, of course, is going to give me a face on the inside, which I want to get rid of. All right, I'm going to grab this and this and this. I'm going to hit my vertex tool tool. And I'm going to scale those down so they come more towards a point. I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to grab all this mess, vertex tools, and squish it. All right, that's here. Reverse my faces. I'm going to make this into a group. And I'm going to run sub D on it just to see without any more change, what does that do? It's all right. Nice. Um, I had some Nauta quads up here. Oh, yeah. So that needs to go across there. I think I have some broken line segments here. Yeah. Not sure what happened, but I had this this line got broken somehow. So when I went into, I have to do the same thing on the other side. When I subdivided it, it I don't know if you guys saw that it made that ugly X. All right, let's try that. Oh, still there. It must be on the other side too. How did I do that? I am so good. I can do things like that without even noticing that I'm doing them, apparently. <laughs> years. It takes years to get to that level of skill. What? Are you two? Are you a problem over here? God. What's happening to the anchor? It's all falling apart. <laughs> I'm winding down. <laughs> all right. Let's see that. See how that looks. Did I get my, oh. All right, that's better. Um, let's real quick go to uh, where's my sub D toolbar? Bump that up one more level. I must have some, I have two hard corners here. I must have interior geometry. Yeah, there's a problem. Whoa. We're going in. All right. That's better. Nice smooth slopes there. Bring this good down here. I might. Oh, no, there's something in here too. But that's actually kind of cool. I kind of want to leave that. I kind of like, but I can't. I can't do it. I gotta, gotta do things properly. I think there's something over here too. Yep. Hmm. So I'm still not right. Oh, there it is. What what in the world is going on here? Where'd this <laughs> triangle geometry come from? Alright. Stick inside. That looks better. Very nice. Alright, so I'm going to That vertical. Probably gonna have to do some scaling in a second here, but we go dangle it from the prow. Prow. All right, just 
get that a little smaller. Shift as I, uh, I will say a few times I have been around ships, I have been like blown away at the size of like, Anchors are huge, man. Yeah. I mean, I guess it makes sense when you say it out loud. Well, of course they are, but like, I never really thought about how big a piece of metal would have to be to hold a ship like this from moving around, but they're, they're big. I know I didn't go put in a place for that to properly go through or model any chains, but uh, that's because <laughs> I didn't do that because I didn't. That's why that didn't happen. <laughs> All right, we dropped that vertically just a little bit, but it's enough. You get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's great. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I really have to get cleanup reinstalled because that was, I'm, I'm deleting some lines that I probably shouldn't have to. Actually, I could run Solid Inspector on that. Um, really should have run Solid Inspector on that. It would have been one click. Um, hey, thanks for coming by, Thor. <laughs> um, I'm not putting the weird face mask into this one. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Already can't sleep at night. That was already creepy enough. That's right. Um, yeah, so we got, uh, got a pretty sweet pirate ship right now. I think what I'm going to do is just, just because I want to do this is the reason that most of the things seem to happen on this channel i'm going to throw some lines on and with my big uh oh yeah my with my i gotta make sure that doesn't happen just want to throw a little bit of rigging on here Out to the uh, pow, prow spit. No, this looks like too much. This looks like like it was rendered incorrectly or something. That doesn't look right. <laughs> I'll throw some some more lines out to some things. Are those the ropes? Yeah, something nice. like that. They're they're rigging of some sort. There you go. I don't know. I did a model ship once. I made like a like a wooden model ship, and that thing had like I don't know. I felt like by the time I was done, I was like tying cat's cradle into the just stuff everywhere. <laughs> and when you look at ships up close, there's a lot of pieces of ropes doing things. There so it is. I'm. This is what I'm. This is probably the least technical I've ever been on something, but because because because. <laughs> Actually, I think that there's, if you look on a real ship, quit squawking at me. <laughs> YouTube is, is squawking. If you look at a real ship, they have those, uh, maybe somebody will know, I don't know if, if my first mate's still around, but they have those little pegs sticking out of the, uh, what I called the guardrail, and that's what these things are a lot of times tied off to. Um, but I'm just arbitrarily picking points to tie to. So just enough to make it look like, ooh, yeah, like like some thought actually went into that. Why is it, what is this? I don't like that. I did that. Oh, uh, Dave, keeping cool. us honest again. Yes. He said it's lines. Rope is what it is when it's on the coil. So it transforms. I guess so. <laughs> so you're like, I did not know that. Rope. <laughs> Line. <laughs> That's cool. That, that, that makes me feel empowered. Like I could transform something from a rope to a line. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is probably like the worst thing you possibly do is tie these two points together. It's probably like make the ship run in the ground and everything blow up. But man, that looks, it looks cool. Uh, now I'm just clicking stuff. I'm avoiding drawing a parrot right now. Apparently <laughs> maybe next week's, uh, Model will just be parrot just modeling. Just parrot for the, <laughs> for the ship. 
but I am using the term ship instead of boat because I've, I've heard that a uh, ship is a big thing. A boat is like something that ship havers scoff at. I don't know if that's true. Interesting. Yeah, that's a lot of ropes. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> is that ridiculous? I don't know. Um, I think there's too much stuff coming up here. I'm going to get rid of a couple of these maybe like, like that. It's a little better. That looks, that looks better. There we Can go. you draw the pirate from Game of Thrones? Oh, wow. I, I don't know about... I'm, I'm more in tune with Trailer Park Boys than I'm Game of Thrones. I got to be Me honest too. with that. Me too, so, actually. <laughs> yeah, Ricky, I got respect for. Yep. Pirate from Game of Thrones. Oh. I don't know who that is. I don't even know who that is. Um... But yeah, so there. What, what do you guys think about that? How, how's that feel for uh, three hours of modeling? You guys feel pretty good about that where we're at? The pe pegs, Dave Richards pointed out, that those things that are in along the, I know it's not called a guardrail either. There's holes in there that the pegs go into that you can tie off to. Not tie off to, cleat to. A boat becomes a ship when it's too big to put on another ship. <laughs> Is, Is that, that true? true? <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> I, that sounds like it's, oh, pirate flag. Hold up. Gunnel rail. Okay. Thanks, Douglas. I'm learning a lot of stuff that I have no idea if this is true or not. Me neither. I'm just going to say it like it is true and then be corrected later. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Don't worry. Don't stress by that. I'm not going to, that's not our flag. Struggling, struggling with the basic functions <laughs> so what's the boat going to be called aaron i w i never i never heard back guys yeah no one gave us suggestions what the heck man nobody cares that's cool whatever <laughs> did this all for nothing <laughs> what's the name of our mighty pirate ship y'all Oh, that looks dumb, but I'm good. The Jolly Aaron. There we go. All right, so we better come up with something <laughs> better. Because that's what it's going to be if we don't hear something. It's going to be the Jolly Aaron if, doesn't, if somebody doesn't come up with something else. YouTube, I know you have some ideas. SS sketch. <laughs> better, better. <laughs> Ship of fools, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Nailed it. All right. Was that two on the nose? Was the name coming? The Love Boat? I think that was a show, wasn't it? Love Boat. Was that a song? Something, something, and something, and love's in there again. <laughs> I don't know the words, but yes. Love Boat. Dave, do you have any ideas for what this boat should be called?
I know we got something else out there somewhere. <laughs> the no stinking parrot. <laughs> <sighs> Too guys, soon, too soon. You guys soon. with your parrots. <laughs> Dave's thinking of a name. All right, we got to have a name by the time I finish our flag. All right, and guys. then I got to throw something in the back in 3D text. And the Jolly Aaron just sounds <laughs> off putting. I'll take a cap in position, but I don't know if I want a boat named after me. <laughs> The USS Trimble. That was Dan's suggestion. Not bad. Oh, how convenient. The not so jolly Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I Fandango. Like the, uh, I think Fandango's a, a Isn't that where you get tickets from? Movie tickets, right? That is where I get them from. Ooh, 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 I like that. All right. What about the uh Ooh. Right, I'm gonna fix this too. I'm coloring back faces, I know. I know. All right, get out my face. <laughs> Sketch ship. <laughs> <laughs> the Trimble Tailwind. Oh. Oh, uh, the Fandango is a Spaniard dance. I did not know that. Isn't that the flamenco? Uh, yeah, I think it's the flamingo. See, you guys could tell me anything, and I'd probably believe it. But she knows her Latin dances, apparently. <laughs> Bodie McBoatface? <laughs> All right, it's happening, you guys. I'm getting the tool out. All right. Hmm. Okay, well, you get what you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, All right, Aaron, do you see any that you like? I was trying to think of something clever related to tools or something like that, but uh, I'm going to call this one the... Sketch a ship. <laughs> it's like etch a sketch. <laughs> the rusty yard arm. I'm calling it because I enjoy my time with you guys. The Friday afternoon. Nice. So Dan wants to know, can the soap bubble pressure be edited at this point? I don't know. We'll see. If I grab it and I say bubble. Dave says, yes, it could. So Minus 100. Burp. Oh, I guess I got that backwards. 100. <laughs> I guess the answer to that Bull is up. yes. Oh, good golly. Okay, that was 50. SS bug splat. That's a good one. <laughs> Bring it down. Bring it down. Be cool, soap bubble. <laughs> wow. It's a growth. Wow. I oh, thought I was putting wow. lower numbers in. <laughs> Why? Why? Something's and not then right. The boat sank. Jeez. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. One, one. What if I do one? Oh, you know what it's <laughs> oh doing? My God. Um, 
We made an airship, you guys. <laughs> control Z. Control Z. Control. Let me out. <laughs> I'm caught a loop. Can fly. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Now you're just being a jerk. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> we lost a. Uh, I'm not sure what to do. Right, I'm just going to have to delete that sail, I guess, just so I can even get <laughs> in here. Oi. All right. Fortunately, I saved just before I did that, so I should be able to just hit revert. YouTube said, luckily, Aaron saved. See, he's got <sighs> your back. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. So uh, if you want to turn your pirate ship into an airship, you can go back and edit <laughs> the pressure on your sails. It'll give you a nice balloon instead of a sail, and that's that's that. But for now, I think I think we're there on the uh, the Friday afternoon, sea sailing the seas with uh, Captain Mark. I'm gonna have to throw a couple scenes in here real quick. We gotta get that right there. That's a scene. Hop down here. Actually, before we do that, let's get this one. That's a scene. Should probably get a the whole thing in here. Oh yeah, look at that thing. That's a scene. And then our final, our final scene be right here get that nice and big and that's a scene awesome well hopefully I remember to post this one at 3d warehouse because I think I'm still a couple behind um, I'll run through the last few weeks I think I think I don't think I put Iron Man's helmet up yet um, but I hope you guys like this. Hope this, you learned something. Hopefully this was a, a fun way to spend a couple hours on a Friday afternoon. And, uh, on behalf of all of SketchUp, we really thank you guys, not just for using the software, but for hanging out with us. This is a, means a lot that you guys would, uh, spend this much time with us. And, uh, like I said, hopefully it was, it was worth your while. If you have more idea, the blame Dave. <laughs> <laughs> the blame Dave. <laughs> um uh i don't know that, that company i like that if you guys have more ideas things that we could could make on these uh these sessions let us know we've got a couple ideas for the next few but we're always looking for more ideas so send them on in leave comments here uh any way you anywhere you see this this uh video end up this will show up on twitch facebook and youtube within the next hour or so once they do their behind the scenes processing thing and it'll, it'll get dumped on there. So I guess the big thing is just thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thanks for watching. Thank you for your input. Um, and hopefully we will be seeing you soon, maybe in a week from now. See you guys later. Thank you. Yar!